A man so loud, noise-canceling headphones don't work around him. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. A choice to get on a mandate. You get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. We love that. About you, right, Gina Grant? That's right. And Paul Brian. Great. I get the carrot top reference. I mean, the name, mm-hmm. but the top of the carrot itself is green. That's I true. Think, I think it's his top. That it's is, his that top. Carrot. That's carrot mm-hmm. color. But it's still wildly confusing to the younger crowd. Horticulturist. So, see about well, hope they're all listening. Straighten that one out with him. <laughs> uh, it may be a little late in the game to switch to moniker, but carrot middle. Been like <laughs> I don't three think decades. You want, I don't think you want carrot bottom. That carrot, feels no. gay to me. Yeah. Carrot meat. Carrot meat. Mm-hmm. Ah. Mm-hmm. Sounds a little gay too, yeah, Brandon. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's just me. <laughs> all right. So I had this, uh, you know, lessons learned in in Hollywood. I was. Uh, doing uh last week uh, i was doing pawn stars the show and uh, you pawned a car no, no. I'm selling a boat <laughs> they they just sent over rick and the guys and the crew and they were going to talk about some newman cars Good. and this that and the other oh you're and the expert the, the old man's like oh i'll give you forty thousand for it <laughs> best offer <laughs> it's best i can do so he's a little bit of a low baller. The, the lesson really doesn't have anything to do with the cars per se. It has to do with Hollywood, okay, and uh, production, and also the weirdness of uh, COVID as well. Because there, at some point, Rick, the host, said to the um, said to the car expert guy, "All right, see you later," and they like shook hands. Mm-hmm. And then they stopped and went, oh, yeah, we can't, can't do, that. do that. You can't show them shaking hands. Uh, hey, can't show it. retarded wow. assholes, it's, it's, like not, it's not spread through touching hands. We've all become crazy, superstitious gypsies. And then the problem is, is yeah, I know, but the guy, you know, History Channel in New York, they're not going to, they made a decree. So it's like you made a decree yeah. that you would get better grades in math if you walked around a telephone pole every time you took a walk with your dog and then at some point said that's crazy gypsy bullshit and you went all right but keep doing it yeah it's it's what we do that's what we do all right everyone that's what you do i so i was they're they're doing the uh standalone stuff where they you know they they do that thing i think they call them otfs on the fly yeah on the fly you have to do those Stand next. The producer stands next mm-hmm. to the camera. And the and cutaway to the, you know, right. I don't know how this is going to go, but I guess we'll see. <laughs> right. It's like, you do know how it's going to go. You just filmed it. They do them in a, a, all those reality <laughs> shows. And I said, you know, I think, and so the thing is, it's like, well, talk about what happened with, with, an, with an eye toward funny. I want to try to be funny. Sure. Uh, so I said, you know, I think I'm just going to uh, keep all my Paul Newman race cars because... I promise to give them to my son, mm-hmm. unless, of course, he transitions. And then, of course, I would be giving them to my daughter because my son is now my, my daughter. daughter. And everyone laughed. Well, let me guess. The company that didn't like the handshake had a problem with that? <laughs> right. And then they do what they always do. So Rick from Pond Stars, everyone was busting up. Because it was an interesting... Everyone likes when you game the retarded system we're living in sure. of everything. And and you beat them on a technicality, it's right? A so twist. it wouldn't be that. And then uh, the producer said, uh, oh, "Yeah, it was real funny." <laughs> that one was for you. <laughs> Let, yeah. Let's just let's just get one more. Yeah. And I went, "I want you to just use the funny one." And they're like, "Oh, maybe, yeah, maybe we will, but let's just grab one more." For and safety. I, yeah. I said, uh, "No, because oh. now I know. Now th- they'll still cut that out or something." <laughs> But it'll end it. Give it to my son. I'll give it to my daughter. <laughs> yeah. But also, uh, listen, um, there's jokes and then there are jokes that sort of come around and you can kind of fix them. Like the time I won the argument with the ladies over at Comedy Central when we were trying to have the two women oh. from Bulgaria and they held up a beat and said, this reminds me of my mm my husband's balls because it's so dirty or something like that. And then I said, uh, said, like, we can't make fun of Bulgarians. I said, how do you know the husbands are Bulgarian? Ah, gotcha. Because we're all married to somebody from a different background. So I would assume they could do that as well. Anyway, you can win things (laughs) technically, but you can still kind of lose the battle or the war. And, 
and I'm sure they'll cut it out, but I don't like living in that place where you go, you said this thing, and we got our panties in a bunch, and now we must get rid of it, even if technically, technically, it's you saying, I still love my son, yeah, yeah. just I will address my son as my daughter. Which is what you're supposed to do. Yeah, which you're supposed to do. That is very progressive. <laughs> right. Anyway. Uh, Was it uncomfortable when you were like, nah, I'm good? Not for him. No, I, I've, I've learned, I've, I've learned so many times they just want the, the, you know, the sterilized right. version of everything, which by the way, cuts the comedy out and makes it a little right. lesser of a product. Mm -hmm. All right. So I was watching the SAG awards last night. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I only saw the highlights. I watched a shit out of the SAG awards. Why? I, well, first things first, I enjoy the format of, um, of a ceremony, of a of a of a show, award an award show. show. Mm -hmm. I like it. I miss it. I, um, conversely, the NAACP awards w was like on the same night or something, and they did everything remote, and everything mm -hmm. was in their hotel room, oh. and the big screen of boxes yeah. up on the wall, and it's like, ugh, it, it felt so flat. Yeah, it, it don't bother. About the same as we talked about an Olympic hockey game with a full stadium or an empty stadium. Right. It just same game didn't mean as much. Do you take some sick pleasure in, so the SAG Awards is the Screen Actors Guild, right? And it's all actors and acting awards and whatever. It's like a distilled, dare I say, concentrated version of the Oscars where you're mm -hmm. going to get some, you're going to get some blowhardiness. Oh yeah. A lot you of blowhardiness. It's, it's, oh, yeah. it's not just editors. It's and it's actors you know, for yeah, actors. Yeah. Yes, yes, well, yes, yes. look. I'm not a warmonger, but someone should start a war three or four days before every major award show. Oh, boy. Because then we don't Good have thoughts. to get lectured on race and inclusion. Yeah. and it, because It's now all you, to Ukraine. You yeah. look like an idiot talking about the transgender right. community when people are being blown up in their yeah, apartments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So it takes all the blowhardy oh actors yes. who have to say something about something <laughs> other than the award or yes. the movie or something. Award season always coincides with the war. Right. The war, the season. war season. The war season. <laughs> we get spared the lecture on right. transgenderism and we get a little uh we united with ukraine right Perfect. which is uh was something we can all yeah, of course sign off that. on. Yeah. Yeah. right so you get a lot of we got a lot of that mm -hmm. uh but then they did the in memoriam and uh you know it's kind of like oh yeah you, sometimes you see norm mcdonald and bob saget and stuff like that and you go god if i was just napping for the last six months i'd, I'd be shocked yeah. you know <laughs> but jarring one of <laughs> but there's always and, you know, they always put the publicist in there, the throw, mm. and, they, and they'll, throw, they'll throw in the, the per Screen Actors Guild person that was, a, you know, the an agent stress. or something <laughs> like that. And it's kind of like, all right, I'm, I'm not going to fight you on yeah. it. I don't care if it's two minutes and 30 seconds right. or 2.51, you know, throw them all in. But one of the early in memorials. <laughs> Bumped me. Oh. Bumped me hard. What was it? Was <laughs> We're going to find out. Well, well, we'll just play it for you. And Chris will stop it when I got bumped. In case I don't see you again, and I'd just like there. to say, so when a man's done all he can, all that is left is to Robinson. Back. We'll see him through it. You can't live Bob for the Sagan. future. Just like you can't live in the past. I feel just like Jane Powell. Like the man said, just a little bit of soul. Don't Terrence Williams. Wait a minute. Did I say Terrence? Arn Arns? Well, there's like a, a thing blocking the screen. Oh, oh. oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Terrence Williams. Yeah, Mod Squad. All right. Wait a second. Cousin It. Oh. <laughs> All right. We, we just had six people. <laughs> What's his quote? We're almost household names that we certainly recognize. And then there's Cousin It from the Adams family from 1966. Uh-huh. Um, now, look. <laughs> Oh, and this one too, Chris, which you should have picked up on. Someone was featured twice. What? They died twice? Mm hmm. Oh my God. How does that mm -hmm. happen? Mm hmm. Yeah. COVID and a they, car accident? They brought him back with a <laughs> defibrillator. I didn't know. I noticed at the beginning, featured twice in the in memoriam, died once. I got to know. <laughs> we got to get a fact checker on this. <laughs> the great. Now, the late great, Marky Post. It was in there twice? Embarrassing. She was in a scene oh. in the beginning, and then in the end has died and wearing the same outfit. So you want to oh, talk Jesus. about how lazy wow. these people are that cobble this shit together. Same episode of Night Court. 
you will see if you go back to the beginning, you will see Marky <laughs> Post, who I you know I know well because I had a crush on her. Is she in the Ed Asner clip. No, She's, in, uh, with she'll, Mac in Night Court. Oh, sorry, she'll, I would imagine she'll pop up in Night Court, and then they just grabbed another clip from the same when scene. A man's done yeah. All he can, all that is left. There's so. Marky Post, uh-huh. mm-hmm. beaded blouse. And I'll give Chris a minute, but toward the end. She's in the same outfit wow. with the same hoop earrings doing the same thing. They couldn't comb through another season. I was going to say, she didn't have a body of work. <laughs> this is why it takes me seven hours to watch a 90-minute program. <laughs> I have to, like, stop, mark what she's wearing, go, wait a minute. I think I saw Marky Post in this thing. I don't know if it's ever happened that the person was prominently featured, took up half the screen in someone else's death, Charlie wow. Robinson, and then uh, later on. But anyway... We'll get to the Marky Post controversy, which I'm sure you guys have heard about. It's, yeah, it's been all over like Twitter. Trending. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, she's trending. It? Yeah, um, died a long time ago. Cousin it. Did, now everyone so far has had a quote. Did they have? Did he? Were there any thoughts from Cousin It? Yeah, remember, remember. Yeah, did he kind of? Yeah, I say garble. Felix Silla, and this is a, no way an indictment of the the proud legacy of the Silla family, but. Felix Silla was a dwarf, a midget, I don't know, little person, three foot two, and put a wig on that basically covered his face. It's just all blonde hair. Down to his bowler Bowler hat and sunglasses and then waddled around the stage and then somebody did the voice. And not a lot of acting going on with this. But then I thought to myself, okay, Ace. I mean, first, That's what you call yourself? well, there's the Marky Post situation. Sure. Now the cousin it sure. situation, my head's reeling. Yeah. But I think, well, maybe this fella went on to direct. Oh yeah. And this is just how his career started. It happens a lot that people slide from in front of the camera to behind the camera. Absolutely. And, uh, <laughs> did all, he went on to play a Wookiee or an Ewok, Ewok or something. Or yeah. yeah. Something like that. But, uh, you know, I'm all for honoring folks. Sure. But it does detract a little from those who had a, the Ed Asners of the world who had speaking roles mm-hmm. for many, many a year. Marky Post or Marky Post. Mm-hmm. He was also the second cousin it. Oh, no. He's not even the original. His replacement. He could have been he the was, original. He's not the hero cousin it. <laughs> there's a, read, read me his, his illustrious IMDb. And look. You know, far be it from me. But every you, know, you put someone on, you gotta make, you gotta bump somebody. Sure. You gotta make decisions. Do you have the have that Dawson, or was it yeah, just committed he was born to in memory? Italy, trained as a circus performer, came to the United States at age eighteen, toured with the Ringling Brothers. Oh. He was a bareback horse rider, trapeze trapeze artist, and tumbler. And then became a stuntman and oh. appeared in the movie A Ticklish Affair. Oh. Best known roles include Litvak, the maniacal miniature Hitler. What? Who menaces George Seagal in the film The Blackbird. Has anyone seen this? They're calling that his favorite role. (laughs) (laughs) He's also responsible for the physical performance of the robot Twiggy. Oh, in Battlestar Galactica. He we probably we, 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 we. All right, but yeah. look, this was a guy who fit into miniature outfits and had no speaking <laughs> roles. We call that a thespian? Mm. No, he's a tumbler. Yeah. He got Ringling thrown. brother. He got thrown. Mm-hmm. Wow. All he's right, a flyer. Sorry. Oh, you know what? He didn't do the voice for Twiggy. Oh. Nobody did the voice. Guy. Well, he did the Twiggy. Do, 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 do. Yeah, he doesn't <laughs> even do the gibberish voice. <laughs> Look, I would have stood up and thrown my drink at the screen if I was present. Thank (laughs) God I wasn't there. What's up with this miniature Hitler, George Wallace thing? It tormented George Siegel. George Siegel. George Siegel, even better. Yeah. Now, he also played one of the hang glider Ewoks in Return of the Jedi. Sweet. Still no speaking. No, no, no. And then he died of pancreatic cancer. Oh, Oh, boy. Okay. Those I still, are his roles. I, I need to see a clip from this Hitler movie. Yeah, Chris. big time. But uh, what? So th- were there two cousinets? He was only one of them. And then what about the other one? Surely he should be memorialized when he passes, or she, because it doesn't really matter. Yeah, the other one doesn't free. doesn't even have like a clickable Wikipedia. Oh, he was just just credited. Put so maybe history. yeah. So this was uh, what year we could all say was the Adams us. family on from uh, Chris? I believe it's uh, 65 to 67. 
That's me, it? Let me confirm real quick. I know. Oh, felt, yeah. felt like two-thirds of my childhood. <laughs> Uh, it spawned any number of movies. Yeah. So he lasted a year or two <laughs> years with no speaking, wearing a giant mop wig and sunglasses on the outside. Yeah. I don't know. In between your Saggots and your Ed Asners, it just, just cheapens it a little bit. I feel the same. End of 64 to 66. So. Feel the same way about the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame when Devo gets in. Right. There's real bands that are in there. Right. You're, you're, you're cheapening bringing the stock it. down a little bit. Yeah, you're bringing the stock price down. <laughs> Uh, did we find Marky's? Did you, did you see Marky again at the end? Marky's. Yeah, it's actually not even at the end. It's like a, a third of the way in. So let's see. There's Marky yeah. Post. Today's Marky Post. Today's well, Marky no, Post. No, not today. <laughs> yeah, a couple right. days ago. But they they showed her, and she's in the same outfit. Let's see. Do we have it? That would be silly. This from a man who has a same outfit. <laughs> There's Charlie in the background. Yep. Yeah, the cloud. You're right. right. It's very hard to miss that blouse. Lazy production. Now look, I'm sure they're being swamped with letters and emails. And <laughs> Sternly angry worded. Angry people are probably yes. taken to the street. Talk uh, to your fans. Tell them what to pile on. Yeah. Hey, the guys, give them a give, break. Give them a they're break. Back beings. it off. <laughs> people make mistakes. Wow. This is why um, I don't enjoy life. You know, I have to I stop and go, huh, huh, where's my notepad? <laughs> but Marky Post, twice. This is an outrage. The people must know. Uh, and this is why when I try to have conversations with people, I get a lot of, yeah, okay. Well, anyway. there you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm Marky Post. Yeah. Right. Now, she is who? She. No, I'm kidding. No, that's yeah. a, that'd be the response. She, uh, she was very hot in oh, night court. Spunky, blonde. Yeah. She was mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. Did you see um, Michael Keaton's acceptance speech? Yeah, I did. Oh, boy. That show, Dope Sick, is unbelievable. And he plays an unbelievable role, and he won for it, which he should have. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he's he's Michael Keaton, whether he's acting or he's just up there accepting an award, all of the Keaton mannerisms, and he couldn't speak. You know, he spent most of it just trying to speak and then getting Did choked, he get up. choked up. He he, he, he yeah. spoke at the beginning, but he got choked up at the end when yeah. he was talking about his Nephew, sister's yeah. son who OD'd. evidently yeah. must have OD'd. Yeah. Right? And, and this movie or this show is about, you know, people who get addicted to Oxy. Sure. It was really it, you don't see Michael Keaton tongue tied very often. Yeah, it was definitely he got choked up. It yeah. was emotional. It just. You could see that moment where he stopped yeah. and started thinking about his nephew, and he just he just stopped at that point. Coda but, took home the big award, the big mm. movie award. Coda, oh, Coda. yeah, the yeah. best ensemble, the, the, the SAG's version of Best Picture, best yeah. ensemble by a movie. And uh, I don't know if you guys have seen it yet. yet. I've been recommending it to a lot of people. It's not it's not perfect. It's a four star out of five, but I found it to be the most enjoyable uh, and probably the most accessible of the uh, Best Picture nominees. So people listening, check check it out. It's I'm glad movie. you brought that up because I got angry again <laughs> <laughs> when they were accepting. Yeah. Well, oh no, did they sign? They also couldn't speak. <laughs> they all signed. I don't know how many of them were I think actually all deaf. One. I you think can, all but one are hearing impaired. You can find the clip. Did they flip the tables and have a translator speaking what they're signing? Because that's only fair. Yeah, off to the side. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, should have, right. they should have somebody <laughs> say what they're saying. reason for me to be upset. <laughs> no, what they did is they signed, although Marley Matlin, I was... You know, her interpreter there? Some of them looked like a little, they were doing gibberish. Like they did sort of handle, <laughs> hands on the handlebar grips, revving the... By the way, listen, when you're riding a motorcycle in airspace, like if you're Marcel Marceau uh -huh. and you're riding a motorcycle, it's a couple things. There's no accelerator on both sides. Right. Say, this don't, this don't, is going to be very confusing. Don't, look, motorcycle. whether you're Marcel Marceau or you're <laughs> celebrating in the end zone, don't do the both hands yeah. throttle. That would be a great liability if motorcycles <laughs> had both sides as the throttle side. The right side yeah. is the throttle. Yeah. So get it right. Yeah. Okay. And don't get me started on which foot you're using to shift the gears. That's an issue as well. Okay. But don't do the two-handed yeah. throttle, motorcycle throttle, which one of the guys did. Now... One or two of them looked a little gibberishy. Yeah, I, I was, you know. I they was, were overwhelmed. Well, I was thinking about our I own uh, Matt, the Porcelain Punisher, oh, when right. I had him do my acceptance speech he did a great and job. translate, and he was doing it. And if you're if you're good, you can kind of fake it as yeah. long as the audience doesn't know. How right. long till that? What Matt did is cultural appropriation. 
Now? Oh, is yeah. it now? Oh, okay. absolutely. I don't think we can show that. What he did was blasphemous. <laughs> well, it, there's all, it's already, as we discussed, because I had this discussion with Dr. Drew a year ago, which is if you're running the closed caption, what do you need the signer for? Mm. And the answer is, and this is a little appropriation, American sign is its own language. Mm-hmm. Oh, like you yeah. didn't grow up reading? I English. It's, it's just it's just one of those we don't want to get hassled, but you can read. Okay. Go ahead and read right. what's on the closed right. caption. But the answer is it's it is its own sure. language. Right. I understand that. Um but so is English and fucking read it, Defo. <laughs> Jesus. Number one. But okay, number two. So uh they were doing the the thing where and Chris will find it, they all did the thing where they were signing. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then they had a person voicing Mm -hmm. over Mm -hmm. translating Mm -hmm. the signing. And there are four people on stage, two women and two dudes, I do believe. And they matched the voice up with the gender. Okay. But not Marley Matlin. She still has her guy. Still has her dude. Wow. Still has her dude. And it's it's weird. It's off-putting. Ride or die. (laughs) She's doing her thing. And there's a dude's voice that... Is representing her, but then they did they didn't mix it up with the others. No. That's like that, her that, guy. That's her ride or dies on the grave, man. She's taking it all the way. Well, maybe she should raise maybe the dude who I've def I've worked I did dancing with the stars with her. So yeah. I was standing next that's to him. Maybe he should raise it up a couple octaves. Like, you oh. know, anyway, you know, when Fred Flintstone would become Frederica and <laughs> right, like, oh, right. fresh, fresh. <laughs> maybe, maybe you should bring it up, you know, just try okay. to simulate okay. a little yeah, bit. That's good. That's all. Yeah. I don't think I'm asking a lot between Feels the theatrical. cousin it, Marky Pose, this guy doing a fake falsetto <laughs> lady voice. Between all that, you are asking a lot. Well, sure. When you add it In all total. together, but yeah, when you just break it off. You know, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step, I've right? I've heard that. I've heard that. Well, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Apparently, he's been her interpreter since Children of a Lesser God. Didn't yeah. she win an Oscar for that? I'm sure Did she he give did. the Oscars? Who has to give the Oscar speech? He comes, he stands next to her. Now they're business partners. Uh-huh. They are inter- intertwined. Gina, oh. Gina cracked the case. Um, we'll see if we can find that acceptance thing. Uh, good news, uh, if you're planning on coming out to uh, Waukegan at the Genesee Theater, March 10th. Uh, and also, I think this is going up, I think this holds true for KC, but uh, as of uh, today, no mask or vax card required. So uh, oh, come on boy. out if you're taking either you don't have your vax card or your conscientious objector. Either way, you'll not be asked for that and you'll not be uh, asked to wear a mask either. So we got that. We'll be lifting some of that. I think the kids' school, speaking of. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll get into that. Kids' school, um, Sonny took a little, I don't know, what would you call it, Chris? A picture, a five-second video or uh, something? I just took a picture of it. Uh, it's a still. I, I, he sent me a little video, but it's a, it's of the picture. He's so being, you know, up. now they got to lecture everyone in school about feelings and hurt feelings yeah. and jokes and when it's appropriate to joke. They're, they, they will not rest until everyone is just one big gaping fucking wounded mm-hmm. pussy. That's essentially it. And they're telling, like, what do you do when someone makes a joke, but you don't like that joke? It, Wait, these we'll are high school on... students? Well, because my six-year-old stepson, they do this in their class, but they're six. Hey, how about when you hear a joke about you, you get the fuck over it, or you fix something. Stop Go on a fucking diet, fat ass, or fix that fucking part in your hair, or get, get some braces. All the traditional stuff. Um, you or, put the... Put fingers in your ears, but that'd be bullying. Right. Mm-hmm. Or just pop the dude in the face and it probably won't happen again. There you go. Yeah. Words matter. It's, Let me see. <laughs> oh, what does that picture say? It's kind of oh, this is like a kind of Yeah, you're going to have to bring it up. Name it, claim it. Yeah. When confronted, the classmate may say, I was just joking. It didn't feel like a joke to me. I feel hurt and offended by your comment. Oh, shut up, you little fucking 15 year old <laughs> pussy. <laughs> There's more. I didn't like what you said, even if it was meant as a joke. Well, tough shit. Oh. Fucking toughen up, buzz. Oh, Jesus Christ. Everyone's a fucking victim. Everyone is being. It's just. It, by the way, this is. <laughs> Not any kind of 
path to happiness. You yeah. with your fucking head on a swivel. Oh, I was joking. You were you joking? It didn't feel. It didn't feel that way to me. What happened to sticks and stones? Because the only way to make matters worse if somebody's making fun of me is for me to validate it and say, yeah. "Now I'm hurt no, you're and really offended." Up about it. Yeah. I I was telling you guys about this shit five six years ago when we started going. I feel this way. I feel hurt. Thus, it must be true. So you made a joke. I feel like it wasn't a joke. So I'm going to nullify your joke by saying talking about my feelings. Ugh. So then they have to have these big fucking gatherings and symposiums where everyone has to fucking sit there. Thank God Sonny has a sense of humor about it. So he takes a picture and he Good. sends it to me. But uh, this is where we're at, everyone. This is, uh, this is the time. I, in high school, had a, um, well, what do they call it? A, everyone would meet in the, well, let's see, we meet in the auditorium. Yeah, an assembly. An assembly. Um <laughs> We meet in the auditorium, so it's an assembly. And uh, LeBeau from Hogan's Heroes spoke about the Holocaust. Oh. Oh, my. Now, kind of a bummer to a 16-year-old. Sure. On the other hand, he was you know, a list celebrity in my world. Sure, <laughs> Hogan's Heroes been off the air for seventeen years, but doing okay. a comedy about World War Two. But uh, he spoke about the Holocaust, but he didn't really talk about the feelings of the people that uh, mm. were involved in the Holocaust. It's sort of stuck to the Holocaust. Oh, we have the uh, Marley Matlin acceptance speech. I, so, is everyone on stage? You saw the movie, Brian. You know, is everybody on stage hearing impaired? As far as I know, okay, so there's four people. There is Marley Madeline, Troy Koster, who's the older gentleman on the right. He's hugging what I mm -hmm. believe is the son in the movie, and the daughter in the movie, I think, is hugging. So, yeah, four, four main characters. The daughter is the only one uh, who's hearing, full hearing ability. The other three, I believe, are either totally deaf or hearing impaired. All right. Well, they sign throughout the movie without speaking. Also, watch it too. When they're saying, like, I want to thank uh, Franco Vitamides for uh, supporting yeah. something. They you moved, the, spell it out. moved you their hand spell like it. two times. Yeah. Like, oh, hold on. No way I got that. Get the gist. They must work it out ahead of time, especially Marley with her <laughs> guy. Yeah. They're working it out ahead of time. All right, let's watch. All right. Marley's well, why first. Is she, why is she at the microphone? That's a decent point. Oh, Brian. I'm serious. <laughs> I don't need this for sure. Oh, oh see? Oh, the, the mic. That's what I pay my interpreter for. Anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> gosh. What? I'm stunned. I'm stunned. Uh, okay. <laughs> Get it together. We need to thank sag -Aftra. You guys. You voted for us. We, we want to thank Apple TV Plus. You guys over there. For trusting us. For believing in us. Our movie. You bought it for $25 million at Sundance. <laughs> Only $25 million. Oh, my God. Vendome and Pathé, the producers. Oh, yeah. That was quick. Sean Heater, our director and writer. Evelyn Wood couldn't we read her hands that fast. Thank you. Thank you for writing the words, including deaf culture. We love you. Thank you for directing us. Oh my God. Oh my God. The interpreters. The interpreters. Thank you all the CODA interpreters. And all CODAs everywhere. Everywhere. All over the world. My kids. Four of them are CODAs. Oh, children of deaf adults. And mm. okay, look. You are all our peers. We, deaf actors, have come a long way. Yeah, cousin it. I <laughs> didn't say anything. I have been seeing so much work out there in all this time. I've watched all of your films. And I pay the deepest respect to all of you. Is Meryl Streep here? She is? Yes? Oh, my God. Okay. Okay. I love you. Uh, I love you. I love you. Okay. Um, this validates the fact that we deaf actors can work just like anybody else. We look forward to more opportunities for deaf actors, deaf culture. Thank you. So, oh, and I'm going to teach you one thing. I'm going to teach you one thing. Do this. No one's playing this her is, off. 
No one would uh, dare. Oh. She wouldn't know. That's oh, a good point. Hey, Gina. We love you. Yeah. From deep. Don't have to stomp on her foot. Oh, you know what? What's that? This wasn't the, this wasn't the bit. Because he won Best Supporting Actor, so the, I wonder if they did that. They thing. announced the category, I think, is uh, what is why they all got up there and all did the hand stuff. That mm. was her winning or them winning, but th- there's there's a category I think they all announced. Anyway, you can look for that. I wonder yeah. what they were all Chris. talking about in that huddle. Yeah, and they huddled up. Yeah, when they, when they huddled up to have that discussion. There is one thing that is for sure, and it's been since she's been working for thirty years. You are not allowed to not like Marley Matlin. No, very charming. Oh my God, that is a hate crime. Yes. Now she's speaking amazing. of inclusion, do you think cousin it got in because he was a little person? Huh? A little diversity box I I there because it I doesn't really. Well, let's just say six foot blonde dude. <laughs> With never speaking onto a recorded, never, never, no, no, no recording of him speaking mm-hmm. on film mm-hmm. and then wearing an outfit where you don't know who he is. Don't feel like that guy makes the cut. Yeah. It puts him over the edge. All right. We got some trending topics, but I do want you to find that clip too, Chris. Okay. And just we'll to confirm, so just so you guys know, they, they were winning as a, an ensemble cast in that particular award. So that's what, that's what that was. This must have been them presenting a category i think mm. well we're in love with coda yeah i'm in love i don't with, want to oversell it. it's a good movie you guys here check it out i'm in love with coda out of texas where they do the f1 circuit race the circuit mm. of the america that's my coda you know what coda mine is hmm. um there's it's a support group for codependent people <laughs> Dawson likes the Led Zeppelin album. You know, that's, that's I'm not that's lying. Really kind of a re release of <laughs> unreleased material, but yeah. All right, I'll, uh, <laughs> let me hit uh, start mail. Free email like Gmail and Yahoo aren't really free. You pay with your privacy. Big tech exploits your data by selling it to the highest bidder. Yeah, well, you don't think uh, we're living in a surveillance uh nation now and world i think in about the last 20 minutes we figured out that uh, people are watching and listening and stealing start mail keeps your email private period every email can be encrypted even if the recipients doesn't use encryption and when you delete an email in start mail it's gone forever start mail uses their own servers not amazon's switching is seamless easily transfer all your current email data and Protect yourself with unlimited anonymous aliases. Backed by the most stringent privacy laws in the world, it's StartMail, right, Dawson? Start securing your email privacy with StartMail. Sign up today and you get 50% off your first year. Go to startmail.com slash ACS. That's start with the T, S-T-A-R-T, mail.com slash ACS. For 50% off your first year, startmail.com slash ACS. All right, we'll take a break. We'll do some trending topics right after this. Thank you. By the way, uh, in the unfinished uh, business department, got a, quite a few tweets about uh, toasters that have a bagel button. Oh, they were coming in hot, and who knew? Hot. Uh, hot. There's a bagel no, setting. Here's the worst part. My toaster has the bagel button. <laughs> Never used it. Didn't yep. know what it was yep. for. Wow. Yep. So Gina, that just, you not, I, of all oh. people. <laughs> no, and SNG, baby. Bagel. I don't know. Yeah, but I feel like in your... Tribes, yeah, culture discussions, is true. Culture. You're absolutely right. So that means it literally just toasts the one side, like the inside. Whatever mm-hmm. side you Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah shuts off the outer one. Great. Yeah, exactly. The inside mm-hmm. coils go. Wow. That's great. All right. Uh, so over the weekend, the, on- the only thing that people were really talking about, of course, was Ukraine, mm-hmm. Russia, and everything that's going on over there, uh, which is kind of interesting because, uh, you know, Big Sean today released. Uh, he put out a dick pic, supposedly, and and that you know that was number two. Or uh, you know you see a lot of celebrities, but it's all been Ukraine and uh, and Putin and Russia all weekend long, except for when the Lakers play. Yeah, the Lakers uh, have. You guys are geo targeted, Chris. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's it's U.S. It's U.S. But uh, yeah, they have not been very good. Um, they, they, of course, oh, they went up. They went, they went out with a so great. I, oh yeah, I'm sure you're very <laughs> happy. So they they went with like an older lineup this season, mm-hmm. trying to you know bring in the uh, the experience and the veterans and thinking, okay, we can take these young kids. And it has not been working well. LeBron even tweeted at the beginning of the season, like, hey, adjust your expectations. Yeah, yeah, please, like, yeah, just just wait. Don't don't 
don't jump to any conclusions now. And he has since he has since deleted it. He says, keep talking about my squad, our personnel ages, the way uh, he plays, he stays injured. We're past our time in this league, et cetera, et cetera. Do me one favor, please. And I mean, please keep that same narrative energy when it begins. That's all I ask. Hashtag thank you. And uh, it has since been deleted. It's it, and um, why it, you delete that? It, uh, it's just it, and now they're kind Didn't of a, age well. they're, they're the laughing stock. <laughs> Please, they're the laughing stock of at least uh, you know this uh, over here in the NBA. Is deleting a tweet do anything anymore when everyone just digs just it up, screenshots it? It's harder to find. Oh, you could okay. reply to it. Yeah, you could reply to it. You could retweet okay. it. Well, all that and, being yeah. said, I'm gonna watch the shit out of that uh, Lakers. Oh, series? Series that they yeah. run on HBO. Mm. What's it called? Showtime, Showtime or something, or something yeah. like How that. How Showtime Riley. began. Or, yeah, I yeah. see those commercials, and I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm down I tell you, that's what, that's what put a rift between uh, Adam McKay and Will Ferrell. Mm. That's right. Because uh, Will yeah. Ferrell was supposed to play Jim Buss, and then there was all this. And then Adam McKay got him. Jerry like, Buss, right? Uh, or Jerry Buss, excuse me. And uh, and Adam McKay uh, got John C. Riley to play him instead, and Will didn't want oh. that. And, yeah, they don't work together anymore. All over that. Or yeah. you can... Pot it down there. Yeah. Um, well, just from the promos I've seen, John C. Riley looks dead looks nuts good. on yeah. Dr. Bus, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So um, he got his doctor. He, he, he had about the same trajectory with his doctor title as Martin Luther King did. It was Jerry Buss, like uh, owner Jerry man. Buss for the first 20 years. And then it became doctor. He got the doctors on there at yeah. some point. It was Reverend Martin Luther King mm. that became doctor. King at some point. What's Dr. Buss a doctor? No, let's ask. Dental? Don't know. Don't know, don't care. Okay. Just respect the man. Yeah. I don't know. Please. What, uh, I don't know, Dawson can look or Kalen or whoever's over there uh, can look. I don't yeah. know what is it a, a doctor of, but. Uh, but winning, hey, winning titles. Yeah. Mm hmm. But well, speaking of, of uh, the Lakers, while well, Gina looks it up too. Uh, so, I mean, like, uh, there, there's a video of them kind of barking back at fans. They're getting booed now at at a crypto dot com mm -hmm. arena, and uh, and they're yeah they're they're all like turning so around in the bench, yelling back at the fans. So and sad. I don't know about Brian or Gina, but I do know one other person here, who, or one person here, not other person, who has sat courtside, mm -hmm. and that's you, Adam. Oh, I yeah. mean, mm -hmm. and what what's it like? Because I just want to. I always I always <laughs> wanted to do it, not so much to see. See what's going on there, but I just want to hear them. I would love to hear what they say to the refs, what they say to each other, talking. what they're saying from the bench and screaming out. And you sat right next to the Lakers bench last time. Yeah. Um, well, it was always uh, it was eight beers in by opening tip. Yeah. Are you shitting me? You yeah. Can still here. Yeah. Solo tailgate, man. I just sit in the car alone, <laughs> get hammered before I go in. Hey, man. If you you think drinking in the shower is hardcore? Try my solo yeah. tailgate protocol. I'll try that. Pre-game. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, uh, the only thing I really remember from that from that excursion was is I was sitting right next to Bill O'Reilly because Norm Pattis invited me and Bill O'Reilly to come sit courtside with him. And I remember doing Bill's show the following week or something. And then he did that move where he's like, Corolla, what was it like with all your Hollywood friends? Sitting there next to Bill O'Reilly. Yeah, the word got the, out. The <laughs> Lakers game. All eyes upon you. Yeah. And I said, ah, it's fine. I told him I was there with my dad. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it busted him up. You can always tell when people don't know what the answer's going to be, especially right. when, yeah. they, when they are trying to bust chops. Um, for uh, me personally, um, I'm the guy who likes to sit a little further back I don't take it the, in. The, the, it's like I thought everyone could see my nuts hanging out of my shorts the whole time. Jerry Buss is a chemist. Physical actually, chemistry. Actually a doctor, a PhD in chemistry. Yeah. yeah. So he Physical earned that doctor. Yep. But uh for me, I when when they you know, people go, they sit courtside to be seen. Mm -hmm. I don't really like being seen. Well, and like you said, like you can't really see. It's like a tennis match because you're right there. Yeah, you, you can get an idea what's going on, uh, but it. But you it, can't get the, the full picture right there, can you? Uh, well, I'll put it to you this way: if you ask most people, they like to sit on the floor, or sit back where they could see everything mm -hmm. going on. Most would choose the floor. It's, it's more of a. It's like I don't drive a convertible. Because I don't like the feeling of like sitting in traffic and just sitting there, mm. like my head hanging out. Goldfish of the car. bowl. Yeah, it feels. Yeah. I, I don't know what it is. I can't describe it, but 
Whereas everyone else would go, oh man, you get to sit on the court. Yeah. Uh, to me, it's like, oh man, I what's get to he sit doing on the there? Court, well, plus right? you're you're on the TV side, so you're you're in oh, like boy. every shot. It's on fame TV hungry. Too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that's so you got to kind of pay attention. I to have that, sat right? courtside, not at a professional game. That'd be way too much money for me. But at a USC game, a shout out to listener of the show, Michael Molina, got me the tickets. Thank you very much. It's very cool. It's its own thing. It's nice to be close and see the action. It's it's very cool. Uh, but you're right, a little higher up would be like a better vantage point. Here's another thing about courtside. I never knew this, and now that I know it, I see it at every single game, or I notice it, I should say. You never see food by people's feet. You never see food or drinks or whatever. There's a flap on this on the on the uh, on the on the um, X of the uh, uh, t- uh, chair legs. You know what I mean? There's like it's like folding chairs, so it's like an X. But there's like a flap that goes up. You put your food underneath it or your drink, or whatever, flap down. That way, it never gets kicked, spilled, mm. whatever. Interesting. Yeah, I had no idea about that either. But yeah, I, I never, I never. Well, you seen ne- have you there. ever seen food or drinks on the floor no. on like a, yeah. a game? No, stuff, th- things would spill all the time. Of course, my God. All right. Well, um, other, well, let's go back to Ukraine because I want to show you guys a couple videos of uh, incredible bravery. Please. And we're going to start with this one. It, it was everyone was watching it over the weekend. A fearless Ukrainian man removed a landmine oh, from, from a from a bridge. This is with fucking his, crazy. With his bare hands while uh, while puffing on a a dart. Yeah, smoking a cigarette. <laughs> yeah, so this, sucking on a here. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is uh, so people online were saying it, it's a TM62 landmine, an anti-tank landmine. Jesus. Has a 17 pound blast oh, radius. What do you do with it at this point? Well, that's that's the thing. They don't show you. Hi- they don't show him putting the it down. Resolution of this, right? Yeah. So well, I, I I I mean, everyone's saying he just he puts it down. Yeah, at the at the end of the forest here, in in the woods, and runs and like then, hell. Yeah, I mean, you just don't want to, you don't want to trigger that off. But uh, yeah, everybody, I mean, unnamed, that just uh, everybody just in like watching this <laughs> fucking hurt locker. Oh right yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So, uh, and then a- another video of bravery. This is not in Ukraine, but I just it, it ties in with the bravery thing. <clears throat> is uh, there's a rodeo recently, and, uh, <laughs> and in the Ukraine? Uh, no, no, this is um, this is in Texas, and 18 year old Cody Hooks. He he uh, he gets bucked off pretty quick. So let's why don't you go ahead and play that, Kalen. And um, yeah, Cody, so, yeah, yeah, Cody, Cody uh, gets out of the gate. You, you watch it now. Gets bucked off He's right off. away. Ooh. This bull's going nuts. You got the rodeo clowns going. The bull does not care about these clowns really. And why is and that, he not now? His, Cody's dad goes <gasps> oh, jumps over Cody. Oh. That's a da- my dad would never <laughs> ever. Jim Carolla would yeah. never. Throw his body on mine. <laughs> Cody got fucked up. Cody was unconscious. And oh, uh, okay, because yeah, he didn't move. Yeah, and he gave him a shot. I I gotta tell you, man, I went uh, horseback riding on Sunday just with so my you daughter. Know, you know from Cody. <laughs> Well, look, I've not lived in the man's boots, but, uh, you know, it does. When you get up on that horse and the horse starts trotting a little mm-hmm. bit, you go, oh, man, those bucking Broncos or those bulls. Yeah. Like, that's a that's a thing. Just don't tie their nuts to a belt and yes, you'll be fine. It's much, you watch it and you go, yeah, I think I could hang no. on for you know, and You ever been to Saddle Ranch? You get up on top of a horse, you go, <laughs> fuck, if things start going south, that would, yeah. Be, yeah. That would be bad. So here's yeah. the question. Who's more heroic of a father? The dude that covered his own son so he wouldn't get kicked by a bull, a bronco, whatever that was, or the dude who pulled his son out of the flaming car in the dock? <clears throat> I can't remember his name. In the shorts, remember? Yes. In the shorts? Wasn't he wearing shorts? Oh, I felt yeah. Like he was there like was like, cash. A, like a, a stock car, or dirt track event yeah. or yeah. something like that. And the dad pulls his son <clears throat> out of the burning look, car. Hey, look. It could have been the same dude. Like that guy could have more than one son. They could have a spirit of adventure. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like like, adrenaline junkie, like their dad. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Oh man, that dad. uh, Yeah, throwing himself on there. Take the hit too. Yeah. So, uh, but um, yeah, his name's Landis Hooks. So yeah, nice job, Landis. Was Cody okay? I mean, I know he he got concussed and everything, but the bull went in for a second shot. Rodeo clowns, man. I've said it a million times, you know, terms, the, the danger to pussy ratio <laughs> of that job. Right. Oh, yeah. you know a clown? Because I mean? jobs, you know, jobs, Gina. Yeah. You got to factor pussy in when you're making a decision okay. in terms of your career. Sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, when you're 23, you 24. Yes. We want no <laughs> pussy. 
You know, look, you want to look, I'll give you a, a straight ahead pussy related decision. You want to be a fireman or you want to be a cop? Because they're both as dangerous. Mm-hmm. They both pay about the same. One has a lot more upside in the pussy oh, yeah. oh, sure. department. The you know? yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. The yeah. other's uh, mm-hmm. Black Lives Matter. Depends. Fuck that. You know, so you, you make a decision. Right. It's pussy based. And fighter pilots, you know, pretty pretty good oh, in the pussy department. There's, a, there's a lot of, but then it's got danger that right. goes along with it. But Rodeo Clown is more dangerous than fighter yeah. pilot yeah. and yeah. minus pussy. Then why would anyone do that? They're gay. <laughs> It's the only explanation. Well, they want to wear makeup and fancy clothes all day. I mean, come on. around the ring. Yeah. Do the math. Why don't they Chris? dress up as firemen? That, uh, that'd be even gayer. Oh. It, it, might, it might be gayer, but also, I, I don't know, just like you go to work, come back, take off your helmet and your and your fireman uniform and hang that up rather than so washing I, off your makeup and that's your right. oversized your kid can be proud of you. <laughs> overalls. Yeah. But then how long can you keep that ruse going, you know, <laughs> yeah, with the point. lady? Like, right. So you work for the, yeah, I work for the Glendale Fire Department. But every time you come home, you said you've been gored by bull? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, it happens. Three alarm bull. <laughs> you know, they get, get cats out of trees. Cut the phone in the shell. Yeah. Oh my God, he's having a heart attack. Is there an EMT or someone with training? Uh, Honey, well, it's I, your time. I can distract the EMT, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> apply any knowledge. Well, according to the New York Post, the bull, whose name was Twizzler, didn't actually gore the father, uh, but did push him in with his head. And uh, everybody's, yeah, everybody's mm-hmm. recovering. Yeah. So yeah, what if the bull just doesn't give a shit about your fancy clown outfit? Then mm. what? You tase it? Well, the bull... I mean, the bull was distracted by the clowns for a hot second. For a hot second, then he kind of forgot he had his eye on the prize. Yeah, like a one second memory. Right. Mm -hmm. I feel like had that guy not gone unconscious, he would have done the rodeo thing and climbed the fence, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the the, the clowns bought him five seconds, and that would have been enough for him to jump over the the railing. But it is crazy when the. The, the bull riders jumping out of the pin that the clowns are jumping in. Yeah. yeah. True heroes. Yeah. yeah that's crazy. Yeah. They, they, they're quick. So, uh, but yeah, glad, glad they're okay. Uh, all right. Let's, let's do another one here. You're um, so. Let it, me say this. They, they've all gone to the helmet, which I don't really like. <laughs> Who else? The, the riders, the clown. Okay. I think you see the clowns. Oh, I didn't see that. The rodeo guys like have gone to a rodeo helmet, which is sort of. Coll- the cowboy hat. It's college hockey helmet. You know, it's got like the helmet with the with the mask. Yeah. The screen. Right. You guys know what I'm talking about? I mean, I why, get it. Why don't you like it? <clears throat> eh, it's like I you don't like that. the condom and porn. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, just keep it real. The extra danger. <laughs> I see. I see. Well, because we'll show the clip again, Dawson or, or whomever. We'll we up. okay. First things first. <laughs> They've gone to a flak jacket. The rider is wearing, he should have had the helmet on. Oh, wait. Maybe is it underneath? One. Yeah. Oh, maybe. no. There is. Oh, dad. Oh, dad. Oh, thanks, dad. Yeah, this is old school because the newer, you can show. And he's 18. You would think that, like, you know, if he was. Kalen will What's the will opposite find, of grandfather it is? And I don't know if it's a requirement on a certain circuits or yeah. something like that, but there is the flak jacket. For uh, getting yeah, so gored. Go gored, yeah. And then there is the helmet with the the mask yeah. on it, which yeah. I like the old school cowboy hat. Yeah. Although I want him to whoop it yeah, up, yeah, yippee yeah. ki yay. But on the other hand, <laughs> this is a pretty good argument for the helmet. Yeah, yeah. Because well, he, it almost looks like he fell on his neck. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did not look fun. Gil. There's the oh, rodeo yeah. helmet. Well, it does Jump. take some of the magic away. <laughs> it, I, I see what you're saying. Oh my god. Is that? And Kalen, you can look for it. Is that Kalen back there? Yeah. yeah. You can look for it. Is it a rule like in hockey when they started in- introducing the helmets? They'd grandfather the guys in who didn't wear the helmets mm-hmm. before and they, was... they let them do it or not do it. It's got to be a circuit thing because this kid was 18 years old, the one that we saw. Mm-hmm. There's no way he's grandfathered in. And you'd want it to be a rule. Speaking of pussies, you don't want to be the guy who's oh, just better no. safe than sorry. Yeah, I think. I think it's optional, uh, but I think you're signaling I'm old school daredevil yeah, when you go out saying. there with the cowboy yeah. hat. Yeah, there's a little more confidence. Oh, mm. you know what proposal? You, you go with the helmet, no rodeo clowns. Mm, uh, I yeah. like that. <laughs> I like, like that too. You take oxygen up uh, up the mountain, no Sherpa. No Sherpa. Mm. Did, you get, did you get a phone case for your new phone yet? <laughs> 
because I for a long for a long time I would go no case just because it would I would take care of my phone that much more like I I would focus on that force more. majeure yeah it'll still slip out of your hand mm. it no I don't have a I don't have a phone how case is that yet. possible it literally you could be holding it with two hands and it just flies out of your hand I I don't know I just it's it's I I'm I'm sort of it's sort of like mm, we talked about sort of like driving a stick shift. Not knowing there's a crumple zone in an airbag, mm. all that kind of forces oh, you to right. drive a little, yeah. focus a little bit. Sure. That's how you yeah. know you're alive. Just put a That's cowboy right. hat on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right. Um, all right, so this video for see some... See if you can find if there's an, a rule or it's an optional thing, because I do see a lot of them wearing hockey helmets. Mm. Sorry, go ahead. Okay, no worries. Uh, so this, for some reason, this video was the number one video on Reddit this week. Uh, it was a clip Hold from... on, hot helmet news. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um and this is going to fall under the heading of I got to spend 200 bucks get my daughter volleyball shoes. Okay. But they play it on a basketball court. Uh-huh. Yeah. Why can't I spend 65 bucks and get basketball right. shoes good enough for LeBron? Yeah. You know, yeah. good you enough think? for my daughter. <laughs> uh, if you go riding and uh, they're under 18, they got to wear a helmet. Mm. They have a horse helmet. And oh, I'm yeah. like, how about, how about the. Uh, how about a bike helmet? I got a bike helmet. She can just wear her yeah. bike helmet. I saw Ryan go by on his bike. He's wearing, right. It's the exact same helmet. Yeah, yeah. But Horse. one is for horses and Horse. the other is for a bike. And I'm like, that's just you selling. That's big helmet. That yeah. is. That's just big Just selling more helmets. Right. You can, protecting the same thing in the same way. You can way. use the same goddamn helmet on the horse as you would on the, the bike. So I'm, yes. I'm not talking Tour de France leather <laughs> one. I'm talking about the one Ryan has, which looks exactly the same. I got into this argument. Yeah. Sorry. Continue. All right. Um, let's see here. So this number video, is video number one on Reddit. Yeah. So it's a it's a clip from the 1997 World Series game one. Timely. Florida versus Cleveland. And by the way, I don't know oh if you God. realize, this, Cleveland is now the Guardians. I don't know if. You oh knew. right. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. That, that kind of snuck. It, came yeah. out no, of nowhere. Where that come from? Came out of nowhere. They um, still have Chief Wahoo though. Very offensive. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So, uh, so, but the, I'm not. We're not going to talk about the game. We're going to talk about the national anthem. So, everybody started watching this video again. It's of the band Hanson performing the yeah. national anthem, and right before they go on, everybody's booing them. Mm. And then they do the national anthem. They do a really good job. They turn the crowd around. Yeah, I, I think I think they did. But here, let's let's take a listen a little bit. If, if we have it. But I love it so I will, much. I will say this, too. Hanson hasn't been on the show in years. We, I, I would love to get them back on. Oh. Uh, but they still send us a Christmas card every year. They send cookies. Oh. They, yeah, they, they do? Yeah. This is the first time hearing still, it. <laughs> you, guys, yeah. you guys are already long gone by the time they, uh, <laughs> they come in. But, they're, yeah, they're the sweetest guys. I love wow. I love that. We should we should have that in our <sighs> archives, right? Because it's I always, have it in my home archive. Yeah. I don't have it on this computer. It's part of the pre-show soundtrack. Like we play it before shows. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for so when we uh, when we heard do live shows, while. Adam Adam requests it's certain walk up music because sometimes Man Eater will play, like the club mm. will play Man Eater, the theater, and they play their own playlist, and it's usually pretty crappy stuff. The, the club the, the clubs do a lot of George Thorogood, Bad to the Bone, yeah, yeah. and like yeah. shitty rock songs that they think dumb people are going to yep. respond yeah. to. It's just weird. They, it, it's 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 kind of offensive because it's just shit rock that's supposed to be attitude rock, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. We're getting everyone in the mood. But I just pump. sit in the back and, and go, ugh. That's yeah. true. It gets the one person who needs to be in the mood out of the that's mood. That's right. Yeah. Or in the mood, because now I'm angry and <laughs> oh, ready yeah. to complain. So we, we come in with our own playlist for all of our live shows, and uh, and Hanson's live umbop in this very studio is on it. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, we is that know. Bad Religion, I think, is on it? Yeah. It's great. Yeah, well, Elvis Costello, a lot of great, great stuff. But uh, and nobody, nobody ever complains about that. So we we always love playing it. Um, no, I'm, I'm always caught off guard because I always sit in the green room and I hear it and I go, "Finally, a club that's got their <laughs> shit together musically." Nope, and then, nope. it, then by the time the third Graham Parker song comes on, I go, "Wait, <laughs> Wait a minute, that's us." That's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Lastly, uh, Batman. The Batman is oh, trending Batman. right now. Uh, the reviews have uh, come in. The embargo has been lifted, and they are good. They are really, really oh, good. Oh yeah, Sparkly so, Batman. Yeah, Sparkly Batman. Robert Robert Pattinson is playing, and Paul Dano is playing the Riddler. Said he couldn't sleep when he was playing the Riddler because uh, he was too into his role. <laughs> Uh, but Adam, uh, I know you saw Uncharted recently. Well, you did? Yeah. Yeah, I want to know what you thought of it. 
if we're talking it's, about new movies here. It's uh, I shouldn't be surprised. It's no <laughs> national treasure. <laughs> oh boy. No, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that's a film. <laughs> this is a movie. <laughs> You know, you can't beat Wahlberg and uh, Spider Man or Come whatever. On, yeah. yeah, they're they're you know actiony, ridiculous, whatever. I I, I love those genres. I, yeah. I don't know travel and nonsense. No, so uh, it's not it's not very good. I I we could guess, but I I, I can't believe it's it's got to be in the mid thirties on no. on Rotten Tomatoes. But if you like that kind of shit, like. You know those types of adventure yeah. something movies. Treasure hunters. Then, yeah, then it, then it's kind of yeah. fun. Do you know it was a video game first? Makes a lot of sense. No, but it, uh, when when you see the movie and it wasn't very good, then you kind of go, "What was all this, this about?" And on. then you kind of go, "Oh yeah, it's based yeah. on a video." Do you game. see it, Brian? Are you shitting me? <laughs> Come on. No, it's not part of your job. I know. Yeah. That's what I thought. Did you have a glass, of, a sparkling glass of prosecco while you watched I'm it? I'm trying. How dare you? <laughs> I'm trying to catch up on the Oscar movies. I saw Attica today. Very intense. Mm-hmm. Documentary about the Attica riots. Mm-hmm. Of course, mm-hmm. 71. Okay. Well, while you're doing that, we're watching Pam and Tommy, and it's fucking awesome. Right. Oh, we, we saw some of that in the green room. Watch we're, a lot great. of it in the green room yeah. between shows. Yeah. God, she, good. Lily James is a, job. the same. That is Pamela Anderson. Yeah, it's uh, very watchable. Um, yeah, what is it on Rotten Tomatoes? What is that movie? Is Uncharted. It? Uncharted. Uncharted. You think it's? I'm going to guess 33. Tell you, I've had like 36 oh. in my head it for some good. reason. I, know, I was excited to watch it. Oh, uh, look, the know, people have know. it at 79, and then you can you can watch it. Ah, oh. ha, ha, ha. Uh, critics 41 percent, audience 90 percent. There you yeah. go. Well, I'm not a critic. I'm an audience <laughs> member. So, so I'm enjoy. All right, yeah. carrot tops coming our way. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for listening. I listen to Water Cooler podcast. All right, uh, we're going to uh, bring Carrot Top into the show, and we'll do that right after this. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Ace Man, this is Jim calling from Montana. I heard you talk uh, with Drew and do a bit of a deep dive on character the other day and it helped me fully understand the term and now I have a standard character test that I adhere to. Do they flush the toilet in a public restroom? Get it on. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm with you on that, but if they use your the foot to hit the plunger and open the door, then we got an issue. <laughs> Scott Caratop Thompson has uh, joined hey, us from Las Vegas. He has a residency at the Luxor Resort yeah. and Casino. And for tickets, you go to uh, his website, caratop.com. Good to speak to you again, Scott. Yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah. Uh, one, long of the, time. one of the things I wanted to get into with you that um, okay. is more recent is the uh, the amazing Jonathan passed very yeah. recently. And I saw that doc with him in it, and it was good, and he, it was crazy. Do you see that doc? Which one did you see? Because there were two oh, that that's came a good out well point. Yeah. Steve Byrne, friend of the show, directed a, a conventional, really good documentary about the guy, and you got to know him. Then there was a very bizarre, surreal one that came out about trying to make a movie while Steve Byrne was making his movie, and it's yes. bizarre. Yeah. Very I, bizarre. I think In I fact, saw that was very bizarre. And so they, they, they came to me about that, and I said, only Jonathan would come up with that kind of idea. I mean, you know. <laughs> What uh, did you? I, uh, so I saw you in the doc, or at least one of them. Did what did you? Were you guys friends? What, did you come up together? Where? Well, no, we know? were no, we were, we were very good friends. Um, I didn't I didn't start up with John, but when I when I got to Vegas, I of course I had known him as a comic, and then we you know being Vegas guys, you know we have to you know eventually run into one another. So we have. Uh, I, I I told the story on my Instagram. I, I had we had like a volleyball pool party at my house, and uh, he said um, he was a very if you don't know Jonathan, he was a big prankster. So he would say, he said to me, Hey man, you want to see my new Hummer? And I said, sure, you know, sure. You got a new truck. So I we went to my backyard all the way down, all these cars, all the way, like two fucking blocks to, to look at his new Hummer. And he had his friends sitting on the curb humming. <laughs> and I was like, I mean, I spent an hour walking to his goddamn car to see his Hummer. And he's like, hmm, hmm. He was just, just, just stupid. So Jonathan was a very, uh, he had the best sense of humor, though. 
I, uh, yeah, yeah, I think he had a whole bunch of cars in his warehouse. Yes, or he, something. he had tons of cars. And, and his house was a, a, literally like a, a museum. You walk over and they'd be like, Tahuga! you know, things come out of the walls and things would drop. And, you, you know, the whole time you're at his house, you're, you're just scared shitless. So it was he loved that. He just ah, he was a good guy. What are you uh, what are you into? What do you collect? Oh, How do you spend your money? <laughs> <laughs> what do you into? It's a loaded question. Um, I don't have I, you know, it's weird. I don't have any jewelry. I don't have any. I have one car. Um, yeah, no, I really don't have any, I, any, I have nothing. <laughs> I don't really have a hobby of any sort, really. Yeah. Do you just put your I money in the bank? I have dildos in my show. Yeah. Oh, there the it dildo is. dildo collection. Yeah. yeah, puts it back into the show. Yeah. Yeah, I, I write mean, it off. Yeah, yeah, what, so for you, like, when you, well, like, let's just say, like, take us through the process of, you have a joke, it needs yeah. to be executed, something yeah physically needs to be built oftentimes yeah, I, yes. probably built them yourself in the beginning yes now i still do i still do i made one last night I, or <laughs> it was my birthday like i don't know there you go and so i had this they gave me a cake and you know now you know the covid and all this it's kind of stupid I, i'm gonna i'm gonna try to i should have saw this like a year ago when covid was big but it's a cake so they gave me the cake and then everyone you know i'm gonna blow in the candles and I thought, you know, th there should be a, a thing where you don't, when you blow on a cake, you don't spread all the germs, even without COVID, you know, it's just spitting on a cake. So I got a cake and then I drilled holes in the, the, the thing that went over it. So you stick the candles and you can blow all over the cake and then just take the lid off. So, <laughs> and so did you like physically that's the newest one that made the, yeah, made the show yet. It, it will too. Are you like, do you go down to the shop and make it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Is I've, it, got enough, I've, I've got nothing else to do. Yes, <laughs> I, I go down and I uh, I go I'll go to myself and I'll buy the props and then I'll go and I'll make them. Yeah. Is that for more of a secrecy thing, or you just like to do it? Oh, I just like doing it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and no one's going to build my stupid shit. So, I, <laughs> um, kids, I had one, wife, I had one all that day. stuff. Oh yeah, I go had ahead. One the other day, it just made the show, and I and it's really funny. So I I was in a Target and I was. I never do this as I know comics like write jokes. I never sit down and write. I just kind of go to lunch and if something happens or like that night when they gave me the cake, it just hit me. But um, I was in Target about a week ago and I saw a little one of those little mirror balls, you know, like a little mini mirror ball. Mm -hmm. And I'm holding it like there's something funny with a mirror ball. And I'm like losing my mind. I got to think of something funny. And then I went through the hardware department and I saw a mouse trap. So I said, oh, a gay rat trap. So I put, <laughs> I put the mirror ball on the little mouse trap, and it spins. And that's how you catch a gay rat, right? So when I, when I, when I was bringing it up at Target, like anyone does, right? The, girl, the lady was looking just at the stuff I was buying, like, odd. Oh, he's buying a rat trap and a mirror ball. Like, what the fuck? And then she looks up and she sees me and she goes, oh, my God, that makes more sense. That's funny. Is that going to be one of your new jokes? And I said, yeah. She goes, you got to tell me what, 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 what what's it going to be? And I said, it's going to be a gay rat trap. And she went. Like, <laughs> okay. That's the reaction. Like, when, have you ever seen a gay rat trap? She should have been like, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> So. Yeah, well, you know, those Target folk are hard to impress. Yeah. <laughs> I suggest you try that joke on the greeter. Yeah. Oftentimes they're a little simpler yeah. Yeah. and more easily impressed by the visuals. Try right. a Walmart next time. Right. Yeah. right. yeah, well, how do how does one go out as Carrot Top without being made as Carrot Top every <laughs> 10 feet? Or do you like it? Or how do no. you do it when you don't want to be made? Yeah, you just you don't. You, I'm fucked every day. It's it's like you know. And, I, and the weird thing is, I don't even know, I don't even know. I just I like. Oh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go grab lunch somewhere. I'm gonna go like in the hardware store and grab a prop. And then I realize, oh yeah, I'm carrot top shit. <laughs> like you don't. You just kind of don't. People get excited, you know, and some people don't get excited. <laughs> but um, that happened to me here in Vegas one day. I was I was at Home Depot. I never forget this. And I'm buying you know something stupid, and the guy in front of me was doing, and it was, it was rich little. And I just remember thinking, Holy shit, rich little's buying like a spring and a battery for something. And he said, yeah, how are you? I said, what are you, what are you buying? He said, I'm, I'm none of your fucking bed. I'm buying a spring and a battery. <laughs> and I said, it's just like anyone else. People always say, don't you have people that shop for you? You just do this yourself. I'm like, Who the f who's going to shop for me. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, is Rich Little still alive? I think he yes, is. He's still, he's still, yes, he's still alive. Sorry. Is he doing like a lot of dates? 
He's just a little live, little live. He's still there. He's still got it. He's got a show somewhere here on the on the on the avenue on the strip. You know. So Rich Little was, you know, the biggest <laughs> impersonator, impressionist. You know, back when all impersonators yeah. weren't female impersonators, oh, no. but yeah. we actually had people yeah. that did. Sure. He would do, you know, Nixon and all, Reagan, all yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Do them all, and and he, he still and he still does. I think he, he's at the uh, the uh, Tropicana. He's at the oh, Tropicana. Gina, please, we're trying to promote. Uh, <laughs> do a bundle. Yeah, and he was a staple of all the roast. He would always oh. be right, right, right. He was always he was he was brilliant. He's been in my shows. He was he couldn't have been nicer. He and uh, um, but he is still alive. He came with like David Brenner. Now, see, either you love David Brenner or you didn't. I love David Brenner. I just thought he was brilliant. Now he's uh, dead. Now he's dead. Yes. Okay. <laughs> just to be just to be clear. Yeah, yeah Rich yeah. Little's well, you know, eighty three years a, young. Mm-hmm. And a sad and a sad thing to bring up because you started it mm-hmm. and with uh, with the amazing Jonathan is like you know there's been a lot of comics uh, it's it's been a weird month or two you know oh yeah um, Louis Anderson was probably my my favorite uh, closest friend um, so that was a rough one because I didn't even know he was sick you know and just uh, ah damn it just uh, yeah he, Lou is great Lou is a great great. Great guy. We've had the pleasure of having him on a few times. He was really nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think he was yeah. on he was on <laughs> with us in Vegas. He was. Yeah, he was. He was, and then in studio. Yeah. So for you, uh, are you Florida guy? Is that where you came up? I have a vague uh, memory of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Florida and the, yes, that's where I started uh whatever this is in Florida and then uh yeah, moved to Los Angeles and all that. And then I got the the show here. Um and then yeah, and then been here for 20 some years. What is the ritual for when you have a residency? Like comedians, comedians like performing, but they don't like the road because it's a lot of airports and travel and all that kind of stuff. So you go, all right, well, residency solves that problem, but I don't know if it creates other problems. Sure. Yeah, no, it does. I mean, uh, when I first got it, I didn't want to do it. I, I, I turned it down. It was like, you know, a, to desk job in a sense. I'm not going to go to the same thing every day. And, uh, and I fought it and fought it. And they said, you know, try it. And, uh, I was, I remember being miserable for the first six months or a year. I just, just did, I couldn't get into a rhythm. I didn't know how Vegas is a different beast altogether. I was a road guy and I didn't mind doing the road and the bus and all that. But, uh, then one day it clicked and, uh, and then it's been, yeah, we just had our 16th, uh, 16th year at the Luxor. Yeah, it's crazy. Wow. And uh, But there is, it's funny, we were talking about that the other night with that, with comics. I said, you know, it, it'd be interesting to find someone that would want to do, like, I do six shows a week, like 240 shows a year. It's not like, you know, they have these things now in Vegas, they call them residencies, and they do like a weekend mm-hmm. every two months. And it's like, it's not our fucking residency. A residency is resident. You live here and you resident, you work. So, um, yeah, I don't think a lot of people... Um, I don't know. Penn and Teller have been doing it pretty long, but yeah. there's two of them. Yeah, but only one talks, and so I I got that one. I uh, um, so okay. And by the way, I feel the same way you do about residency when people use that yeah, with yeah. Uh, she donated her eggs. Uh-huh. Yeah, for forty grand. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's where I roll. But like, what time do you leave? Your compound. I'm gonna go ahead and just call it a compound. Nice. The carrot the carrot compound. The carrot pound. Uh, and then <laughs> when do you come home? Like is it do you not have to be you know, you'd have to be anywhere well, till six yeah, PM or no, whatever? Yes, yeah, some sometimes it depends if there's things we gotta do um down there, but on an average day I would leave around five thirty, six o'clock and I get down there and do a sound check, which is weird for a comic, but I like doing I like to hear my voice every day and hear the get the there's lots of music so we do a sound check and we kind of rehearse a new joke or a new prop or a new bit and then we do a meet and greet and then we do the show and then i'm home by 11 wow and so it's, still, it's still kind of a long day yeah five to 11 and uh then you pretty much during the day can go yeah, down and drugs, bug drugs, rich drugs, little drugs. <laughs> at home depot uh, or do drugs yeah or, do drugs and home depot and but uh yeah. uh you're not married you don't have kids right no, I got a dog over here looking at me somewhere. That's it. 
<laughs> that is, you know, I think about a lot of comedian friends I have, you know, like your Sarah Silverman. We're, we're all losers. We don't have wives. Well, maybe you're just insane narcissist and there's only room in your life for yourself. It's not, you don't have to be a loser. I mean, there, I was just with Bill Maher's house. He's not a loser. He just likes himself some Bill. Tom Green, same thing. Yeah. He yeah I mean, if you took. That's hilarious. I, you know, Doug Benson, I could mm -hmm. go on and on and on sure. of the comedians that are in their 50s, have never had a kid. Not married, often never been married. It's, you know, your but average it, American is shat out a kid by now, and or yeah, but, but a it's marriage. Weird because it, I think I, I think you make a good point, but I think in this in this business, which is weird, there's no time. There's no time for uh, you know. Sorry, but I mean, I, this, I know a lot of friends that are married and have kids, but they're miserable. <laughs> um, you know, I, I I'm always traveling. I'm always working. I'm I'm, I'm always on the go. I don't have time to. I don't have, I just never, it's never in the, it didn't seem like it was ever in the equation for a stand up comedian to have a family. It just seemed like the family is the clubs and like you just mentioned, Bill Maher, Tom Green. I mean, uh, and then if you're someone like Ron White, you, you know, you end up with seven wives. <laughs> well, it's true. Like for every comedian that never got married, there's someone who's been married 11 times. True, yeah. <laughs> right. So maybe in the balance. Yeah. It's you all know, you make it up for it. But I mean, <laughs> Uh, let's get, let's get real carrot. The, yeah. you know, you could, the F1 drivers have kids and a, and a wife and there's many other yeah, jobs. They have, private, they have private jets and nannies and stuff. But it's not really a practical thing. There are plenty of guys who travel a lot, mm -hmm. who have dangerous jobs, who have jobs where, you know, my pit crews, my family or something, but they still got w yeah. a wife and kids somewhere. There's something going on that's less practical. <laughs> and I've been... <laughs> You bring up a good point, but I guess there's probably some, I think like in auto racing and all that, NASCAR and, and F1 and all that, they're kind of, if, if, if they don't have a wife, then there's talk on the track. Oh, you know? right. So, so I think they kind of have to, they sure better have a baby and a beautiful wife because I'm mm. going to be standing with the national anthem and no, no wife. Um, <laughs> it's a boss. So I, in comedy, I think we just, yeah, no one gives a shit. I don't think. So look, are, are, you're gay for Doug Benson is what I'm hearing. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> what you're trying funny. to express. <laughs> no, well, I'm saying like in certain, no, I'm saying in certain, no, you're in certain right. things that they have to, you know, the, the image you have to have. And I think Carrot Top is like, there's no image. They're like, where's his wife? Where's his, they, you know, I have a dog. They don't, they don't, I think that's as far as they <laughs> think. Yeah. You know, if you're, an F1 driver and you're single, you're an international playboy. Sure. And if you're NASCAR and single, you're gay. <laughs> right, right. That's so why you got to get F1. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I can't, I'm still trying to figure out, I don't want to comb over your finances. I'm just trying to figure <laughs> out what, nice. it, what are your indulge, how does Carrot Top indulge? You know, I don't see, you know, I, I watch TMZ. I don't see you chartering a yacht and putting all your friends yeah. on it. I, I, is it, you just, you know, invest the money or put the money in the bank or whatever and just sort of lead a normal life? I leave. I leave the most boring life, literally. I mean, I'm lucky because it always sounds weird. Oh, I have a house in Florida, so you know, like uh, kind of a show up. But but I live there, and so I that's my biggest thing. I go I go there. I live on a lake, and I and uh, and take my boat out, and uh, that's it. I don't really, yeah. There's no there's no excitement. People went, years ago wanted to do a, a a reality show with me, and they came out and they met me, and they said, "You are fucking boring. We're not. We can't do. We can't do anything." Well, and it was true. Like I didn't do drugs. There wasn't any kind of scandal. There wasn't anything. <laughs> happening. It's just like, okay, I'm going to go to the gym for a bit and I'm going to go to the show and I'm going to come home. And they're like, okay, <laughs> can we make up, can we make up a better life for me? I mean, we can, I can pretend to be cool. We've talked um, about that with, you know, different musicians and comedians and stuff that it's, yeah. it surprises a lot of America to know this, but a lot of entertainers who do this all night, you know, this is your job are introverted. Yeah, I think so. Well, I, I but think I'm not, but I'm not in two inch version. I was hated when Robin Williams passed away and everybody, everybody in the world came out of the woodwork and said, are you okay? Are you depressed mm. too? Like every comic. And I said, no, I'm not like every comic's not depressed and sad. I mean, it, you know, it was just, you know, they get looped into, um, I, I remember one night we, we had a meet and greet. It was so weird. And it was usually before the show, but this was one after. And they had all like friends and people that I didn't know some of them. And this woman comes over and she said, it was right after Tiger Woods got in trouble. 
with, with, with some kind of girl. And she says, you know, it's people like you. And I'm like, me? And she's like, you know, you, you, you show biz people. I'm like, wait, what the fuck? How am I, how am I, how am I, how am I put into this equation? I, I don't even, I don't even know Tiger Woods. <laughs> Well, you know, yeah, people, you know, you know, you people, like you, you showbiz people. Yeah, you weirdos. I do. Um, I did meet Tiger after that, though. <laughs> I do think there's an element of everyone wants sort of the opposite of what they've had. So if you work as a pastry chef, you don't want to eat pastries mm -hmm. on the weekend. If you've, you've been up on yeah. stage, you want Decompress. quiet time. Right. I, I find myself. Everyone thinks I'm insane because I find myself watching The Love Boat and Starsky and Hutch and Charlie's Angels, and they think I'm a retarded person. And I go, yeah, well, but all I'm doing is nothing for this time being. I don't want to. I don't want to solve any problems. I don't want to be challenged. I, I. I don't. I. I don't. All the great offerings of Netflix are fine, but I just want to sit here and do nothing for this mm -hmm. period of time because I. I do a lot when I'm not mm -hmm. here and I just want the opposite of what that is. And that's probably you in Florida fishing, I'm guessing. No, I don't, I, I don't watch the love boat. You are. A fucking oh, I have an idiot. Up. You're right. But, um, I actually love the, I used to love the love boat and fancy. I don't know. <laughs> I, well, here's a good example. Last night, literally last night I had some, they were going to take me out for my dinner for my birthday. And they said, what do you, you know, where are we going to, where are we going to go? And I said, I'm going to go home and watch smoking the bandit. Mm -hmm. And they were like, on your birthday? I'm like, yeah. And, and I, I, I watched half of smoking the bandit and then I watched cannonball run oh, yeah. and I had the greatest time. I had the greatest time all by myself I had a glass of wine and it's in there. It's your birthday. We should be doing Coke and horrors. And I'm like, no, I want to watch cannonball run. <laughs> and then <laughs> I respect my dog. Yeah. Well, you forget the, the greatness that was Burt Reynolds oh. in that, in that era. Oh, that movie's I amazing. Just, I just, I, you have to look on my, I just posted a picture literally last, I, it, uh, of him and I when, uh, this is weird if you have time, right? So I'm on the Tonight Show and I'm a guest. So it's Burt Reynolds, the guy from Nickelodeon. I forget the guy's name now that was, that was, the, that was hosted all those Mark shows. Summers? Yes, Mark, Mark Summers. Thank you. Good and call. then, and, and good. It was a good call. And, and then sad. me, right? Right. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Burt goes on, does, you know, whatever. And then Mark Summers goes on. And Mark Summers picks a fight. You can look this up. P picks a fight with Burt Reynolds and basically says that Burt Reynolds is a loser and and they get in a fight and it's really, really bizarre. And I'm back there. I'm ready to go on. Right. This is like my I'm on with Burt Reynolds. Holy right. My, what is like, year is this? Um, I can look it up. 19 something. 90 something. Early 90s. Or 2000. It was, it might've been, it might've been 2000 something, but anyway, I get bumped. They come over, they get in a big fight and the guy has a pie and he throws it at Burt. Anyway, so the picture of me and Burt Reynolds, if you look at it, it says Carrot Top, Burt Reynolds and Mark Summers, I get bumped, but I have a picture of Burt Reynolds. You can see all the pie and shit all over his red sweater. And uh, he couldn't have been nicer. And I remember saying, you know, I used to stalk your house in Jupiter and try to find you. <laughs> He's like, that's great. <laughs> But yeah, Burt Reynolds, man. That's what? why I grew my stat. I what? grew this semester. It's just because of Burt Reynolds. It's nice. Yeah, nice. the uh, Jupiter, Florida, I'm guessing, where Burt mm. yeah. Jupiter right. Island. Um, yeah. What was the story about him and Mark Summers in a pie in a fight? I, was it <laughs> I something know. that they planned? I, I, no, I don't think so. It was. I don't, I don't know. If it was, it came off real weird. I and mean, you can look it up. Burt Reynolds, uh, Mark Summers fight on Time Show. But I think it was not real because I, I was back there and he came off pissed. He was like, Get me out of here. And I'm standing like, I got a picture with you. And he's like, yeah, sure. Sure. So you got bumped? I got bumped from, yeah, from that night. And I get it. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you showed up with a whole steamer trunk full of stuff, right? <laughs> yes. My gay, I wish I had my gay rat trap in there. Oh <laughs> man. America Damn. was ready. <laughs> they were ready. Yeah. I think I may be screwing this up, but I think the first time maybe even the first and second time Jimmy Kimmel, that is, was doing yes. Letterman and he was his idol. Like mm -hmm. he had a Letterman, he bought the Letterman Letterman jacket. He had a Letterman, right. his 16th birthday was a Letterman cake. Right. Like, I mean, he was insane. And he had this whole bit about, I'm, I'm such a crazed fan that I think I got a Letterman tattoo or something. And it, an artist drew, <laughs> you know, Letterman's head, you know, two feet, wide on his chest or his back or something did the whole thing and then he got bumped uh. and bumped in that flew to new york 
got right. the whole Letterman head painted on his chest. Went Jeez. to the you, you're there the whole day, and then you get bumped at the very end, yeah, yeah. and then you I get same. back on a plane and come back to New York. Yeah, LA. I did the same that day. I was I got there at, at noon. I was always the earliest one because I had to rehearse all my stupid stuff in my trunk, and uh, and then um, yeah, it's like six o'clock in the afternoon, and they go, yeah, you're you're done. Is there an L? Is is there an element? And maybe this is me projecting, but an element of relief. Like, I'll bet there was a little part of Jimmy that was so revved up and nervous about yeah. going on to Letterman. Yeah. This, all, this, has been, this has been in the making since he was 16. That right. when he got the bump, there's a part that I went, see that. Ah. did you have any of that? Oh, like, like relief that I got bumped? Yeah. I don't think that night, because I was so excited to say I was on the show with Burt Reynolds and I was in the crowd. But when that, when that fight started, the crowd kind of got, so I might've, I might've saved it. Like it would have been a nice energy to go into because they were, the crowd was kind of ready for something fun because that wasn't fun. They were fighting. So, um, but the worst was, was, was Jerry Lewis telethon. And I, and I did it every year for like 20 years and I'm sitting there with Ed McMahon and, and I'm up next. It's not a joke. I'm up next. He's stand there and Jerry stops in the middle of the thing and says, um, um, I had to be the one to bring this up, but Timmy so-and-so ha has just died. And, and I'm sitting there and I'm like, like, oh, what's going on? And he shows a picture and a video, right, of this kid. And everyone's crying. The crowd's crying. Jerry Lewis is crying. I look over at Epic, man, he's standing there. I'm, he's going to bring me up. And he's crying. I said, I'm not going up, am I? <clears throat> and he says, probably. And I said, no, he wouldn't do that. And he says, probably. So he's like, and just, <clears throat> and he says, now <clears throat> to make everything great, here's Carrot Top. And I'm like, oh God. I mean, literally, I walk out and I'm like, hi. And uh, I didn't, I, don't, I remember it was just, it was horrible. It, it, I used to always make a joke about it. I would always be the one that would make the band laugh. I, that was going to be the name of my book. At least I made the band laugh, right? So, the band was always laughing. If I didn't have the crowd, the band rim shotting and chuckling and uh, nothing for like three jokes. Nothing. I mean, nothing, not even like a peep. And I, then I said something like, uh, we got to We got to We got to I'm in the same boat with you guys. We got to We got to figure out a way to, to just wipe your tears. This is going to work. And I pulled something out and it, it got a big laugh and then everybody forgot. Mm. Oh, and it boy. was good. But man, it was, it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my career, I think, as far as uh, in, a, in a spot where you're just like, that wasn't like, like bombing. You're bombing on TV. You're just, you, but you weren't even bombing. It's just you were in a situation you couldn't be responsible for. And, and, and everyone's feeling for you, but they don't know what to do. And I thought was like, just, um, why did and then he, I just, why him. did Jerry do that? I mean, that's just. I don't know. He could have he gone to commercial break and, and come back and said, what do you think, kid? But he just, no, he's, and then I remember Ed McMahon, after that, all that, we became good friends after that. He, uh, I think we talked about it a few times. And I think I had said the same thing. He said, why did you, why did he do that? He said, because he trusted, he, he, he knew you could do it. I said, okay. Wow. Yeah. And then they brought Gallagher out. I mean. Gallagher. Oh <laughs> yeah. my God. What, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. He, he and I had a big fight. <gasps> Gallagher or his brother? <laughs> No, no, he does. <laughs> Gallagher one or two. Um, yeah, Gallagher. My joke used to be my my joke used to be, but I, I wouldn't do it on the, sh on the show. I bet my crew. They, his brother, you know, did his act. They have, there was two Gallagher's, and I used to say the, the joke was Gallagher, Gallagher one, audience nothing, um, <laughs> or Gallagher two, audience nothing. Right. Um, so his brother was his a friend of mine, and Gallagher one. They, I've known him for since I used to write jokes for Gallagher when I was like fifteen years old. <clears throat> and submit him and, and, and stuff. And then he was like, he loved it. He loved it. I gave him one, one time. And it was a, it was stupid. But remember this is 30 years ago. He said, this door must remain closed at all times. I says, why is there a fucking door? And he said, <laughs> I love that. Yeah. And so that was the kind of stuff he liked. And, uh, I had, a, he, what's your favorite, what's your, what's the joke? Cause I just started doing comedy. I was 15. I started coming up with jokes. So he, he said, what's your best joke? It was in Fort Lauderdale. I was I met him backstage and I was like 15. I said, uh, my best joke. I mean, I only got one or two. What's the best one? And I said, well, you'll like this. And it was not even a joke. It happened. So we went on the beach. 
with all my friends we were in high school and we built a big campfire. And this cop came out and says, you got to, you can't have a fire in the beach. You got to get it out of here. And I, and I said, there's, we're, we're next to two things to put fires out. We're in, we have water and sand. We're, you can't be safer than this. Right. Where do you want us to go? He says, take it in the woods. And I'm like, you got to be shitting me. So I, I tell Gallagher that he's, that's funny, but you did it backwards or whatever. And, da, 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 da. and then I don't know, maybe 10 years go by. And I, and I, I called him and I said, Hey, I'm on the tonight show. And he was like, you're coming to my show tonight? I said, no, I'm on the Tonight Show. <laughs> and what what Tonight Show? I said, the, like the actual NBC Tonight Show. I went, I wanted you to watch and check it out and give your your take on it. And he was so fucking mad that I that I that I <laughs> went into comedy and I got on the Tonight Show. He was so mad. And then he said that I stole his act. And he said I he said I stole. He, the best part was he said he said you know what you did that was wrong. And I said what. You stole the stupid shit. You didn't take my smart stuff. Mm. I said, what does that mean? He said, all my stand up. Why did you steal that? Why did you steal my props? I said, I didn't steal. Not one thing that I do in my act is even remotely close to how and what Gallagher does. And I tried to explain that to him in a nice way as he was spitting on me. <laughs> And I said, Gallagher, everything I do is different than what, like, uh, you, you do like a, you, you, you always did kind of pun stuff. His stand-up was brilliant, but he'd do like a butterfly, right? It was a mm. butter, stick of butter with, with wings on it. And butterfly, right? And I, I'm like, uh, I didn't do that style. I did my own little stupid, you know, gay rat trap. <laughs> so <laughs> The heady stuff um, for the thinking man. Well. <laughs> no, no, Gallagher, there a there couple is. things about Gallagher. <laughs> Gallagher did make he had a george carlin mm. side to him mm. when he would oh, talk no, he, about the government the irs <laughs> and stuff like he, there was a kind of brilliant you remember yeah. you know the sledge oh, yeah. and jumping on a giant bed and stuff but he had a side to him that it was a little more mort saul it was absolutely brilliant and i told him that and i would do it in interviews and i'd say you know who influenced you say like gallagher and but not really with the, the prop side of it as much as his stand up. I'm telling me he's brilliant. He would do that thing with the bombs, comb, C O M B is comb, B O M B, bomb. No, that be, it, 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 it's a brilliant bit. And uh, I always gave him credit and props. And then that day, he was, I think we've made up. I don't. <laughs> well, so he's insane. Although it is funny when you do an impersonation of Gallagher, you're also kind of doing Roseanne. Uh, at the yes. same time, because they're both <laughs> yeah. about the same age, and they both are yeah. comedians, and they both went a little and little nutty, so it's got the Crazy same hair. tone to it. Yeah. So Gallagher, yeah, you yeah. stole my act. <laughs> <laughs> Gallagher lives out. He lived out in like Thousand Oaks or something, oh, really, yeah. in a weird place with a trapeze and a bunker or something. I remember me and Jimmy <laughs> talking to him for a while, but trying to get a handle on him. Then I guess he just sold his act to his brother. His brother yeah. just took the act oh, yeah. out. Wow. But you he know gave that? it to him. But I he, know. he gave it to him. Wow. And, and then there was, it to him. was there, did he steal it? Was there an issue? I don't well, know I'll what happened. Are you going to know the story? I'll tell yeah. you the exact story. So, Gallagher, by the way, I just want to set the table that Gallagher was, you know, as big as Evil Knievel was in the oh. in the eighties. I mean, nineties. Like every HBO special is like another Gallagher. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was his household namey as a comedian has yeah, ever been. Brilliant, yeah, brilliant. He had a special every year on, on the show. Exactly at Showtime. Showtime every yeah. year, a brand new hour, and they were always brilliant. He would end with the thing, and he used to make a joke about it. But so what happened was Gallagher, of course, his success was so big. He had I was entering the comedy club scene, uh, scene and he wanted to have. He wanted to have his name still in comedy clubs because he was doing arenas and doing theaters and people in comedy clubs didn't know any more about Gallagher. So he said, hey, man, to his brother, do my act. Now, here's just two problems with this. One is you might I might if God forbid I had someone look like me. Right. You you might have the stuff to do it, but you don't have the You don't have the charm in the in the in the in the what do you call it? Je ne sais quoi. <laughs> well, yeah, yes, thank you. That is exactly the word. So when his brother would go out and say, hey, here's the thing. He didn't he did. It wasn't him and it wasn't it wasn't charming. It wasn't it wasn't he didn't have the it. Right. So I know exactly the venue it was in Detroit. So Gallagher wants to book a show. This is all real. Wants to book a show in Detroit at like the Palace Theater. And they said, we can't book you. Gal you're, you're already booked in Detroit on New Year's Eve. <laughs> And he said, 
no, I'm not. I'm, that's why I'm calling to book a show. And they said, well, you're already booked at the, at the Riverside, whatever the hell it's called. And he said, what are you talking about? He says, Gallagher is, you are playing at the Riverside. You can't book two shows. And he said, I'm not playing. I'm not playing there. And they said, well, you're, he said, my brother. So he called his brother and says, you got to cancel your show because I want to play Detroit on New Year's Eve. And his brother said, no. Wow. And he, imagine that. But, but I'm the actual Gallagher. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. You got it. You got it. You can't. You understand? You can't do this. I'm the act. No, but I'm I'm him. Yeah. No, you're not him. I'm him. Oh, fuck. Imagine that. I think so. we'd uh, I can't remember why Jimmy and I spoke to him, but it's probably because we're trying to make a movie called Kill Gallagher. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a reason. <laughs> Which is uh, it was a decent premise for a movie. You guys, That's hilarious. It was, it, you know, it all stemmed no, from, I'm trying to find that we had the thing. band, uh, it was actually a Dr. Drew joke. And he made, Dr. Drew makes a joke every seven years. <laughs> oh, he was in, it was inadvertent, but we That's were, most Dr. Drew jokes yeah, on. we had the band, uh, <laughs> Dishwalla uh-huh. on, oh. and, uh, on K-Rock, on, on the Love Line. And I said, uh, what is, uh, Dishwalla? Where'd you get that name? And they said, oh, these guys in these Indian villages, uh, they, they call the guy sets up the satellite dish to Dishwala or oh. something. And I was like, oh. And then they were like, oh, these little <laughs> impoverished little villages. And now they're watching, you know, Falcon Crest and <laughs> Dynasty and stuff. And that's going to be weird. And, I, and then Drew said, imagine they saw a Gallagher concert. And so that's funny. you're picturing the, the you know, the the crops are dead yes. and the sun is burning down and it hasn't rained in three years. Standing at a bread line for and this days. guy pulls up a giant watermelon and holds ah. it over his head and they're all like, oh, yes. Uh, uh, then the sledge boom, it's a sledge <laughs> and And the elders and everyone's insane. They're going nuts. And then they basically decided that this guy, they don't know who Gallagher is. They just know he's the anti-crop. They think he's a preacher. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They go, crop. they take the kind of fuck up young yeah. brave who's sort of the guy's getting into screwing up all the time and they just cobble together whatever money they have and they're like Set him to Vegas. go find him and kill him That's so that we bad. we can have a crop you know then of course this guy ends up at a buffet at Caesars like what the fuck is going on and he has to shoot him like during a concert and he finds love and madcap yeah it was all idea and i think we tried to get hold of gallagher and that that was probably one of the mistakes yeah. we have the video nice. of mark summers and oh. burt reynolds from 1994 oh, yeah, right, chris awesome. found it yeah so this is this is the tonight show so burt reynolds was the lead guest and he didn't interview and then uh but uh leno makes a crack about his recent divorce burt reynolds recent divorce and then they bring in mark summers and burt moves over to the next couch so burt's already in a bad mood because mm-hmm. Leno made a joke about I was sitting the back divorce. there, I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we can watch uh, what uh, Mark Summers did. Scott's in the wings. Have, uh, an Who told course? you were a neatness freak? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just say that because your back is to me, and I, I, I was just talking to a back. No, no, I, I can talk to you too, Bert. Thank you. Watch um, out, he's got scissors. He's got, he's got scissors. No, I was just wondering who told you that because my my wife tells me that often. You, she says, "Good morning." I'm, I'm you're still married, as a matter of fact. Yes, well, you. <laughs> Dumped his water all Dumped over. Dumped his water on his crotch. Oh! Oh, oh Bert got him in the face. Swatted him with another yeah. mug. So Mark tried to retaliate, and Bert uh, hit that back at Mark Dude. into Mark's face. And then Mark eventually does get Bert. Mug of water. Mug yeah. of water, yeah. And then so. The swat on the mug could have smacked Mark in the face. I think it did. Yeah. It did. Like it did, yeah. yeah. I'm surprised so, he took a picture at me. I was like, I didn't know what to do, and I was like, hey. Where'd the pie come in? Yeah, so, well, Mark, well, you know, he, he does a lot of Nickelodeon. Was, All right, go ahead. There was supposed to be a thing, I think, you can watch it, but I think there was supposed to be a thing set up because he was doing that thing on Nickelodeon, and they were sp- both going to throw dare. pies at something, but not at each other. Oh. Yeah, well. Yeah, so Mark wanted to do a bit with pies, and then Leno nixed it, saying, I don't want to do anything with pies. But right. then when all this is happening, he looks at the producers and goes, Let's bring out the pies, bring out the pies. And right, no, exactly. No, really, that's exactly right. Oh and God. I remember I remember thinking, oh, man, because it was real. It wasn't a fake fight. Like, they were, he was pissed. Oh, you're doing a duel? Oh, they're yeah, the, doing a duel? The Let's see. Back to back. All right, ready? The count of three. One. Bert's pissed. Two, three. Oh, oh Jesus. he hit him hard. He whacked him in the yeah. face. Bert oh got God. him dead nuts on. I didn't realize what a big guy Bert is. Oh. 
Oh, oh Jesus. Oh, slipped. Slipped. He whacked him in the nose. Oh, now they're hugging, oh, kind of. He could have a bloody nose. Jesus Christ. And according to Mark's book, during that embrace, Bert whispered, I did that because I like you. Oh. Oh, boy. What does he do when he hates Jeez. you? Uncomfortable. That was that was like that wow. Was I'm glad you brought that, that up. Like, that was like the old what's the Springer show shit. Yeah, they really hauled on each other. That, oh that no, a, they did. A, and, and then the picture of me with him. He's got, he's got that red sweater on with tile over, and I'm like, wow. <laughs> yeah, Bert. I've interviewed Bert once or twice. Salty. I asked him a question about boogie nights. Maybe he didn't like it. Go ahead, Brian. Uh, yeah, I got it. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> That's the gr- late great. I attempted to compliment him, and his response was, oh, "Don't do that." <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> well, I think I was telling him how much I loved him in Boogie Nights, yeah. but I think he hated Boogie Nights, mm. so he answered with, "Don't do that." <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Let me uh, tell you about Gold Co. Uh, Scott, want to hang out, and we'll do the news for a few minutes after yeah, this. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let me tell you about uh, Gold Co. If you have an IRA, a 401k, or savings account, things are getting a little scary out there, people. The government printed more money in the last two years than the previous 100 years combined. The national debt just hit uh, $30 trillion, and inflation is its highest since Adam went to high school in 1982. (sighs) Only a matter of time before we have to pay the piper. If you have 50 k or more in retirement savings, your money... Could be at risk. Call my friends over at Gold Co. That is Gold Co. And see just uh, what you can do to protect your retirement with gold and silver before it's too late. Give them a call, 866-600-1898. Or you can go to adamlikesgold.com. And they'll give you up to ten grand, 10000 bucks in free silver when you open an account. That's adamlikesgold.com and get that money. All right. Wow. I'm so mm. glad you brought that story up. Oh All right. God, oh, there, there they are. are. <laughs> there they are. Carrot and Bert hugging, hugging away. And Bert, Bert, you could tell, used to play a little football because mm-hmm. that, that pie came hard and in the face. Oh, yeah. No. And he started walking away to get in range early <laughs> on. Oh, uh, man. All right. We'll take a quick break. Scott's going to hang with us. and We'll do the news right after this. Much about Ukraine to get to. So let's just uh, do with some beats over there, a uh, little bit of an overview. Uh, Russian President Putin put his nuclear forces into, quote, special combat readiness on Sunday. Putin has previously said any country that tries to hinder him will face such consequences that you have never encountered encountered in your history. Meanwhile, the U.N. estimates that half a million Ukrainian ref- refugees have already fled, um, although Guess who's not allowed to fled to flee? Men ba- eighteen to sixty, 60 or fifty nine or banned something. Banned from leaving the country. You must stay and fight. Men, eight, well, I've heard men oh, eighteen right. to sixty, men eighteen to fifty eight. But you are not leaving with your family. Um, I'd head down to MacArthur Park and be like, "Hey, uh, amigos, I need a fake ID." <laughs> yeah. And they're like, "What do you want a fake ID for, Gringo? Don't worry yeah. about it." Sixty one and a half. <laughs> That's right. Um, EU (laughs) announces it will send weapons to Ukraine while also shutting its airspace to Russian planes and banning state-owned media. Of course, we're putting sanctions on the banks. This is the first I'm hearing about it, so maybe it's a naive question, but that's a very bad tell, right? When you're not letting males age 18 to 59 leave your country, lest they be needed for for combat? Like. they're an, it's an emergency. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I was no, going to Is this Russia or Ukraine? Ukraine. This is Ukraine. Ah, yes. Okay, when sorry, you're sorry, handing sorry. out the rifles to the citizens and they're making Molotov cocktails. I misunderstood. Yeah. I well, I'm glad you said that because, uh, of course, this is not being... Ooh. T- yes. Not a bad time to transition, fellas. If I don't know how they roll oh. over there, but oh, that I you could like, pull that off in L.A. No, you're right. I feel like maybe elective surgeries might be pushed back. No, no. I just I identify. identify. As, I see. I see. Account. That's enough. Uh, Ukraine. Yeah. So so men have to stay back to fight. Dancing with the Stars alum, Maxim Chermoski, he's been live streaming from Instagram. He revealed he was arrested when he tried to leave Ukraine, but uh, says he's all good now. Looked it up. 
I was like, well, isn't he? If he's a Ukrainian citizen, he's not going anywhere. I think he's a U.S. citizen now. Um, the Russian military did not fare so well in a battle. And I don't think they're reporting this on Russian TV. Uh, on this roadside battle in the outskirts of the capital, which shows, and I'm going to show you, which shows Russian military equipment and vehicles just destroyed, reportedly, by the Ukrainian army. Here's a clip of CNN senior international correspondent Matthew Chance walking viewers through this aftermath of this battle. I was listening to what the Admiral was saying there, John, about the Soviet-era military equipment and how well it might perform. Well, here you go. Right within the past few hours, there has been a ferocious battle here on the outskirts of Kiev. And this is one of those Russian Soviet era vehicles, which is completely burned out. You can see this is a bridge actually is an access point to the northwest of Kiev, the Ukrainian capital. And the Russian column that has come down here has been absolutely hammered. Obviously, we're still in a very exposed situation right now. but. If we can just bring you along here, there's the debris everywhere, the twisted metal of these vehicles. This is obviously just a, just a truck carrying supplies. We saw the armored vehicle in front there. It's rubble. I mean, yeah, around, everything's burnt out. Broke. Look at this. I mean, what kind of munitions does it take to do that to a car, to a vehicle? Um, all right. This is one of my many things. It, it's been called Kiev on TV the whole time. I'll tell you why. But it used to be Kiev. I'll tell you why. I was going to ask you that. As far as I understand it, Kiev is the Ukrainian pronunciation. Oh. Kiev is the Russian pronunciation. And it, this whole time it's been like a slight to Ukraine. Like they're not even their own country. Just pronounce it the way we pronounce it. But Ukraine say Kiev. So we say Kiev. Oh, I was curious about that. The whole I never asked you. I don't That's have any smart people to ask. Yeah. This is I, I thought it was just more smarty pants shit. Like what they did <sighs> right, to me with right. the Cannes Film Festival. It was the Cannes Film Festival for <laughs> two decades. And, and yeah. it went to Cannes. It was and very divisive. So they always go, you want to change the name back? And they go, I don't know. How's Adam pronouncing it? Well, he just got used to this other one. All right, we'll go back to Can then. If Adam's saying Khan, we'll go back to that. Yeah. That's, I thought it was one of those this things. This actually has like a pretty decent reason. Okay. Oh, yeah. While we're on the subject of naming cities, why is like uh, Florence in Italy? Uh, it's, it's Firenze in yep. Italy, but we call it Florence. Are we not capable of saying Firenze? Well, what is about that, is that a wildly tongue twisting word mm -hmm. to say? Why must they change? Why don't it? we Anglo? call? Why don't we call Germany Deutschland? Indeed, are these impossible words Espana. to say. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm all I'm all for it. If whatever, however they do it. We should do it that way. We're the Estados Unidos. Yeah, see, well, well, uh, I'm you. from North Hollywood, California, so it's not Hollywood as... Hollywood Norte. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Not as tough. And of course, everybody heard that. I like Rancho, I like Rancho Cucucamanga. Oh, that's yeah. a good one. Cucucamanga. Mm -hmm. It's just fun to say. If uh, I have kids, I'm going to name one of them Rancho Cucucamanga and the other kid's Saskatchewan. Just so when I'm going <laughs> to... They learn to spell real somewhere in public. Saskatchewan, Rancho Cucucamanga, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> um, the the quote heard around the world over the weekend, of course, is uh, the United States or Biden offering to get Zelensky out of the country. The president, who, by the way, is only 44 years old. I know. And he said, I need ammunition, not a ride. You know, he, he stays to fight. Yeah, that was a good comeback. Oh, wow. Yeah. He also, according to the SAG Awards last night, has some sort of acting yes. background or something. Not only he had like comedy or something. Not only is he an actor comedian, he was on Ukrainian Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> Motherfucker rode a unicycle. <laughs> no, he no. 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 he's an entertainer in a former life. And again, really? young. Yeah. Um, and by the way, you you mentioned Molotov cocktails. I'm glad you did because a brewery, you know, everybody's volunteering. It's really heartening to see people flooding into the country to help in any way they can. A brewery in Ukraine is joining the fight against Russian troops, switching out their craft beer for Molotov cocktails. That's what uh, they're doing now. Look, I appreciate the fight and the, the passion, uh -oh. but I feel the same way about when we had our own COVID thing. It's like the Budweiser plant <laughs> switched overnight to making hand sanitizer. Yeah. These guys are making Molotov cocktails. Uh, on Monday, they were making fine microbrew, <laughs> and on Tuesday, then I was like, how good was the beer? <laughs> <laughs> you could switch that fast into making poison, essentially. But I uh, mean, don't you just have to stick a rag in the bottle? 
I don't well, know that much got, about Molotov cocktails. You need a lot of alcohol. Okay. And then you put the alcohol, and then you put the sock in there, and then you, yeah. this is all for, I learned from watching Red Dawn over oh, and over okay. again. Okay, so you know more than <laughs> me. That's all I really know about how Good. that works. Okay. But evidently, you know, very, very effective. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's where we're at. Again, I, I think of Adam whenever there's something that just seems like it's from yesteryear, from another age, and we think, what year is it? We, these people are standing in line being handed bottles of beer to light on fire to protect themselves. Like, what? it's just crazy that this is happening right now. And it's also, we are, you know, yelling at nine year olds for not being double masked in mm-hmm. LA Unified. And right. these guys are, these guys have real yes. problems over here and they're handing their 15 year olds yeah. Molotov cocktails. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's also a bomb shelter. Um, their subways go so far down like like to like middle earth i mean crazy far down i listened to a woman on i think it was npr take the escalator down there's three escalators going into like the molten core of the earth because the soviets built them that way in case there was war we better hope the shit doesn't go down in los angeles because if we all have to go down to the subway oh the bombs may not get us, but we're getting stabbed by a hobo. <laughs> the hepatitis for sure. Like, Dude. Adam died during the war. Like, what happened? A bomb? No, some hobo, some junkie pushed him on the tracks. He was hiding from the bombing <laughs> under the right. How many of the population is going to die not knowing where the subway is? Oh, right? here? I know where a subway entrance is. True. No. <laughs> I would just I would I would go to Dodger Stadium or or the Staples Center or crypto and I just start running around like a maniac looking for a hole. It's gotta <laughs> be somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, this is yeah. And and I've been wondering, like, why isn't Ukraine part of NATO? Everyone's like, oh, we stay out of it because they're not in NATO. And I have not done a deep dive on this. I've done some very light research. So there's probably some holes in this. But uh, apparently the U- Ukraine hasn't always been like the epitome of democracy. And so they're not really led into NATO just yet, but I, I think we're obviously doing the right Here's thing. Here's the scary Helping. part about um, Putin. Mm. I fear we're, we're sort of in the same spot. Like pe- a lot of people are saying, oh, he's diminished. There's right. something going on. Right. Her Condi Rice saying, that's not the same dude I spoke to three no. times this or is whatever. Syphilis there, in the brain. There's, an, there's something going on. Right. And you go, man, that guy's diminished and he has this nuclear arsenal. Mm-hmm. arsenal. Well, we have our own diminished leader as well sitting on top of a nuclear arsenal, but we he has handlers. There's right. people around right. him. There's not this isn't going to happen right. no matter what he thinks might or might might be a good or bad idea. Right. I don't feel like Putin, I feel like he has like MC Hammer's posse. <laughs> <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Like, hey, you look gay in those pants. Oh, thanks you for the timely <laughs> advice. Like, it'd be like you're fired. You know what I mean? Like, you're fired. You're dead. Yeah. You got to have some people in your posse to tell you're spending too much, or yeah. you, look, you, Gates, you, you look horrible yeah. in this, or whatever. <laughs> that you don't need another Bengal tiger running around. Sure. That's a liability. You know, Putin. I don't. I don't think he has the f- checks and the balances he, around he him. He may have eliminated the. May have eliminated about, some yeah. of those naysayers. I think you're right. I just. I've never Googled this before. I thought about it. Is he married? Well, apparently he's not. He was married to... Uh, a, 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 Him and Carrot Top, yeah. two of the greats. Yeah. He got divorced in 2014, or I'm assuming divorced. Yeah, she I told him know. not to leave the house in those cowboy yeah. boots. What right happened to Ludmilla? But yeah, there's literally nobody in his life telling I, him I to stop. I was literally going like, you know, that we have a lot of nuke stuff where it's like the code must, be, you know, right. the key must be right. put in simultaneously. Like, Who's his second in command oh, over there? Who's changing the codes every day? <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, we'll see. And uh, and I love how he, you know, he's invading these people who, you know, making up that they're Nazis. Like Zelensky is a, a Jewish guy whose family was in the Holocaust, but they're all Nazis. Mm. And he's saying, if any of you motherfuckers get involved, you're next. So, like, how much do we care about that? I don't know. We're still figuring that out, right? It, it'd be nice if the world sort of just said no. Is, is a message to all crazy yeah. people. Yeah. Well, let's talk about a message to all crazy people. California, Oregon, and Washington State will shift from mask requirements to mask recommendations in schools starting 11.59 p.m. March 11th. That's according to the three governors um, from those states. overnight students. That's right. California is also dropping its requirement for unvaccinated people to wear masks in most indoor settings. 
according to Governor Newsom, but masks will still be strongly recommended for everyone in most settings. Uh, Face masks will still be required for everyone in high transmission settings like public transit, emergency shelters, healthcare settings, correctional facilities, uh, and so on. But we're finally, uh, they're letting off the leash a bit. Jeez. It's been a while. I mean, I'm in Florida. We haven't had a mask in two years. Oh, probably not. And and we'll send over the body bags. <laughs> Newsom's going to send over a boatload of body bags. And yeah. I believe, because I'm looking at what we got from my stepson's school, the schools have final say. So they don't lift it just because the state lifts it or the county lifts it. I love the colossal pussies at the school board that's like, even though the governor said mm-hmm. no, we're still taking a restart, a retarded stance against nothing. Because they, I think they still have a deal in place with the teachers union. Ugh. I know that's shocking. I know. It's going to go on forever. Yeah. Yeah. So, All right. There we go. One more. Okay. Let's do one okay. more. Um, well, since Mr. Carrot Top is in Florida, let's talk about that. San Francisco, LA, New York, move over. No one's impressed. Miami, now the most expensive housing market in the country. That's according to Reality Hop reports that some prices in Miami have soared during the pan- pandemic and propelled a big migration of out-of-state buyers and renters. Many have moved down from the Northeast, from New York. Uh, so apparently what we're going through is cute, but not impressive. Yeah, well, they sh- they can thank New York and L.A. and San Francisco for driving those yeah. prices because yeah. that's where people with money want to go. And also right. people, I, I I feel, you know, in a weird way, I feel, I feel like governors are sort of like publicists were 20 years ago and they're in the same boat. They haven't caught on like mm. they do. <laughs> and now here's what I'm saying. Their, their client gets into trouble and then they go, we'll have a press conference mm-hmm. and apologize and issue this whole thing will blow. And it's like, no, then the press conference ends up being Good more thing. news cycle mm-hmm. and bigger and you still mm-hmm. get fucking fired from your job. Like that's a playbook from 20 years ago. And our governor, Gover- Governor Newsom's kind of like, hey, where are you going to go? Yeah. And it's like that that was true. Like I grew up in SoCal and my family lived here and. Getting on an airplane was kind of exotic. Yeah, it was you a know? big deal. There, and there was, we didn't have the means to just pack it up and, you know, right. head somewhere. And then also, where are you going to live? Montana? Yeah. Idaho? That's not a place. Please. These aren't real places. Who would want to live there? And what would you do? There's no entertainment. Yeah. Can't, no nightlife. Yeah, you can't get any. How are you going to get Thai food? No PF Changs. <laughs> no PF Changs either. Like, there was no, you can't do this. You yeah. can't do that. They're kind of missing the part where people are pretty fucking mobile now. And, they're not only able, but they're willing. Yes. Like, I've never heard more people go, hey, Nashville, that sounds yeah. pretty nice. Yeah. Not only are they mobile, their jobs are mobile. I have a dear friend who moved right. back to Kansas, yeah. didn't miss a beat with her job here in L.A. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If, if you said to me when I was a kid, like, I'm thinking about moving to Nashville. Who are you, Roy Clark? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Where's your banjo, yeah. dude? Okay, Dolly. Oh. <laughs> yeah, like, that's literally, I, I, my answer would have been, where's Nashville? Yeah. I only hear about it yeah. on, on TV. Or in song. So now you kind of, if you're governing a state, yeah. no, think about think about it a little more. Amen. All right, let's bring it home. You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Tweety, tweety, tweety. Gina, Gina Grad. That was the news with Gina Grad. The Luxor Resort yeah. and Casino is where you can find Scott Caretop Thompson. And for tickets, you check out his website, caretop.com. Right. Uh, good to catch up with you, Scott. I hope you yeah, come back it's been, soon. It's, it's been great. I appreciate you guys having me on. And uh, I, 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 of course, we've been friends and fans of one another for, well, at least I've been a fan of yours for years. Oh, I'm and, a uh, fan. I know. You've always been, you've always been nice. You know, I did the love lines with, 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 uh, uh, with, with you one year. I forget now, but the guy that was on really wanted to hate me. And then after about 20 minutes, we became best friends. <laughs> especially that was now. Burt Reynolds. It might, have been <laughs> it might have been, yeah, Burt Reynolds. Yeah. But, uh, but we, we, yeah, but we, we made friends so good. Thanks, uh, Carrot. Always appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, you and guys. And thanks for uh, thanks for having me on. That was a, that was a fun fun time. Agreed. And uh, you can go to amcurl.com for all the live shows. Kansas City's coming mm-hmm. up March 11th and 12th after Genesee Theater in Waukegan, where Gallagher's going to be playing. But then I'm going to slide <laughs> in the next night. All right, so. Until next time, Adam Carolla for Carrot Top and Gina Grand Ball Brian saying Mahalo. 
I've said it a million times, you know, terms the, the danger to pussy ratio <laughs> of that job. Right. Oh, you know a clown? Because I mean? jobs, you know, jobs, Gina. Yeah. You got to factor pussy in when you're making a decision okay. in terms of your career. Sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, when you're 23, you 24. Yes. We want no pussy. 